stiffing all his mum and everyone. Yeah, there's a little bit of cussing in there, which they yeah. bleeped out, thankfully. Carl's in a bad mood already. Excellent. He's been in about three minutes and he's in a bad mood, getting stressed. If you can't hack it, leave. What's the matter with you? No, I'm just saying. It's been. I was meant to enjoy last Saturday off and I didn't. Why not? Why is that our fault? Because you weren't here. Just because. I don't know, but. <laughs> Are you not in the Christmas spirit? Why didn't you enjoy I last Saturday? Christmas. What, what did you I do? Went, you went I went, right, I went all the way back up north again, right, because, uh, it was Suzanne's dad's birthday, right? I was busy last week, didn't have time to get him a present or anything. Didn't have time to get him a present. So I got to Euston Station, bought a card for him, which was a Christmas card, so he wasn't happy because he was saying it's my birthday and I said, well, I won't be seeing you again. So I've got a joint card and then we went out- Did you get him a present? Well, no, because we went out on Saturday night for something to eat at this pub that he likes that does nice steak and onion mm, rings, mm, right? Lovely. So, he should have been happy anyway. Yeah. But- <laughs> Well, you paid for it. No, no. But he should have been happy anyway. Suzanne paid for that because it is her dad, uh -huh. right, not mine. So I said, all right, what, what, what can I do? I said to her. So she said, just buy a few drinks or something. Anyway, I, I didn't get around to getting drinks. You can't believe it. Didn't get around to getting the drinks. Right, so right. I said, right, I'll pay for the cab. Right? Oh, what a lovely Christmas gift that is. Yeah, so £2.50. I paid, no, it in, was like in three, quid there, three quid back. So oh. six quid you spent on him? Well, no, I spent more, you see, that's what he said. He you said, get oh, a Bolton and back, can't he you, said, for that? He said, oh, you've spent on me six quid for my birthday. I said, no, I haven't, because I gave the taxi driver a tip. I'm a little bit worried about his attitude as well. Because <laughs> even if, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is a stingy present, but you don't go, you don't well, say- I mean, let's be honest, that's the worst Christmas gift ever, because, I mean, you're pretty bad, like we discussed in the past, but at least you spend a bit of money. Yeah. It's just thoughtless. Yeah. This is nothing. I know. giving him any time. I mean, I would- And I knew, and I knew my, my demographic. They loved it, oh, my yeah, family. You, yeah, they the couldn't believe their luck. <laughs> you know. Well, a tenner. You spent a tenner on him? Well, the cab fare was six quid. But, but, but the thing is, he doesn't, it's not a, I don't think he's saying that. I think it's the fact that this is like, you know, frittering away and well, either it's they kind like. Of he would have loved to, I'm sure he would have been appreciative of a lovely ten pound gift that you cared about and bought. A book he probably likes fly fitting, doesn't he, by J.R. Hartley. Mm -hmm. If you'd have bought that, he'd have gone, that's what I was looking for. Well. Or E, what I was looking for, Carl. E, bloody hell, Carl, <laughs> you little balls twat. <laughs> that's just what I wanted. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so just calm just down. Think, so what have you got planned for, uh, for Christmas? Is this what, I mean, have you, are you spent, is you, are you doing the same oh, Carl, with excellent. Oh. You've paid me milk bill for this week. <laughs> that were re nice. I'm spent this year. So what, have you planned anything for Suzanne or are you just Yeah, I'm taking her out Christmas Day for something to eat. Well, right. don't, does she know that? Is that, was that? She's just working today, so she, uh, she, you know, so. Right, okay. So what Christmas gift have you got? I'll say I'm taking her out. What, you haven't got, you haven't got a present? No, because we spent a lot Don't forget, that's half yours, though. You're gonna be eating, you're not gonna just be sitting there watching her eat, <laughs> going, oh, I'm hungry, but I spent all of You're gonna be eating as well. That's half yours. So you've got, she's got look nothing to unwrap. It's literally like a cat who's but been hit. Minute. She's got nothing to unwrap. There's nothing. She's gonna hand something over to you, because I've met the woman, she will. She'll hand something over, you'll open it, you'll love it. Right, I might get something today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't take me to begrudgingly persuade oh, you to do it. God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so we're gonna- I'm gonna try and stick in some, uh, Christmas songs. We're not playing all Christmas songs, but I've brought in a couple- So this is Christmas, John Lennon, yeah, uh, The River, Joni Mitchell, yeah. uh, Fairy Time New York, one of the best Christmas songs oh. ever. Oh, well, what about a bit of Pretenders? That's a good one, 2,000 Miles. Let's hear it. Pretenders, 2,000 Miles, on XFM 104.9. This sort of Christmas edition, we're not here next week, are we? No. Carl is, aren't you? Well, you are in a way. I was doing the best of, innit? Yeah, yeah. Is it the best of? Yeah. Brilliant. Have you what, been putting it together? Not yet. Okay. Well, well, I'll, do it, I'll do it today. Tell right. me what bits you want in it and I'll sort it out. It's not for me to say, is it? Yeah, what? it is the best stuff. Well, yeah. maybe people could email in with their, uh, their, the highlights of the year for them. I'm trying to think what they were. I mean, mostly it'd talking be mostly, to Carl. It'd be mostly Carl, wouldn't it? Mostly Carl. Gibberish from Carl. Oh, it'd be, I, I think it'd be an awful lot of educating Ricky from Carl. Mm. Mm. Well, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you've got any thoughts on uh, stuff you'd like to hear again. I Is there any, uh, anything you'd like to hear of Carl saying something stupid, me and Steve laughing or slapping him? Yeah. That's basically the competition, yeah. isn't well, it? Well, there's and a couple of instances where I tried to kiss him, I think, and you encouraged me. Yeah. Those are uh, some highlights for me. Well, or, just, uh, I wish I had a video of that. Yeah, so do I. You mentioned educating Ricky. Uh, yeah. we've only got, do you know we normally have like three installments? Mm. Yeah. We've only got two today. Why? Why? Happened? Just, um... Well, you clearly weren't busy Christmas shopping, so what were you- what's the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, like I say every week, it's a bit of a struggle finding stuff that I can teach you. Sport, but at the same time, what we have got, we've started the feature, I teased MTV with it, right? Uh, so I thought I'd best start doing it before they get someone like Zane Lowe presenting it or something. Yeah. So, do we need them? 
do we need them? And yeah. you should explain do we need them for those that, that don't like the show. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's sort of education right. about animals and stuff, and if we need them. So, like, uh, David Attenborough once said, uh, you can get rid of people off the earth and it would carry on, there's no problems, but, you know, get rid of a monkey and <laughs> you could have problems on your hands. So, <laughs> Is I'm that a direct quote from Adam Bruce's current autobiography? <laughs> it was something, yeah. something like that. I think so, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. what I've done today, right? He always starts having things with, uh, right, so then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, and he always ends things, you got yourself all quite cool, all sorts of problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that, that's yeah. done, that's, that's coming up. Enjoy that, enjoy so that. I've spoke to a woman about, um, jellyfish. Oh yeah, cause I know you're not a fan. Not a fan of them, so we'll be speaking to Women or jellyfish? It, this is a woman. <laughs> Either. <talking about> jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be sorting that out before three o'clock, we'll be finding out if we need them. <laughs> <laughs> that one to bed. He's great, and he's great. And then we've got a uh, Christmas edition of Rockbusters, oh. which oh. I found out yesterday. Go on. Channel Four have ripped it off. Go on. It's on their uh, teletext thing. That's oh, outrageous. Yeah, on their teletext page, someone said. <coughs> what are they doing then? Like Rockbusters, they're copying the format. Are you sure they're not copying Blockbusters? No, no. It's it's uh, someone said it's a cryptic clue of a band and that and initials, and you work it out. That is despicable. I mean, right. we should investigate this. So they've, uh, they've fundamentally ripped off the idea of being out allowed to do a cryptic clue to guess a band. Yeah, but they, they sort of clever cryptic clues. <laughs> well, oh, they so did, they, 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 they certainly ripped you off then, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Hey, so. I should just point out, because it's Christmas time, we've had an email from Dickie Anderson. Whee! Oh, Dickers! Uh, yeah, R.A. is, uh, well, he's, 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 I suppose he's a long-time listener. Yeah. Um, and he emails us most, uh, most weeks. Uh, Ricky. If, as I suspect, I'm your only listener, I wouldn't bother with your show today as I've got to attend some family Christmas nonsense at Auntie Marion's house. <laughs> okay, That's from great. Dickie Anderson and, uh, he's, he's good because considering he hates the show and, uh, everything we stand for, he does, he does take the time to email every week. That counts. That counts to advertisers. Yeah. I think we've got a lot like him. Mm. Mm. As we've also had a lovely Christmas card here from Alexandra, right? Who's, uh, wishes to she loves the show, she loves you, Carl, and she's enclosed some biscuits, biscuits for you to save you a bit of money, cos she knows <laughs> you goes out and get your, your own biscuits, then no, we've got some, a lovely little packet of Fox's well, creations. Well, why don't you wrap them up and you can give them to your <laughs> <Yeah>. girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> And Blitzen from the About a Boy soundtrack by Badly Drawn Boy. Christmas theme Christmas there. Boy. Christmas theme there. You spotted the Christmas theme. Yeah. Carl's not really in festive mood, but uh. I can't imagine Christmas is your time of year, is it, Carl? Well, I'm not sure any time of the year is really. I liked it when I was about. I think when I was about seven, I enjoyed it. Mm. Was That's that the like, one? Was that the year, the big you year get, for you? You get loads of stuff you don't have to worry about anyone else, but once you've, like, got a job. What did you get when you. What, what were you doing your paper round? How old were you then? I was about, uh, 13, 14. Well, that was you then, you were a man, weren't I you? Had to, you? I had to, uh, yeah, I had to buy stuff. Oh. But you're still not you're quite a good selfish time. man, aren't you? I didn't realise this. <laughs> no, 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 it's just that Christmas. And that's coming from him, Carl. M my dad always said. Oh, it's steady on. <laughs> dad said Christmas morning was for, like, you know, for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never- <laughs> That's brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't so bother so me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Dad, it's Christmas. Do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up because she used to like to see my face light up, you know, when, when I open the presents. And then, uh. <laughs> to keep the fireworks. And then, uh. <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards, because, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties, and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun now, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> and really? Yeah, I remember one year, right, I got, got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? Brilliant. Uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in. He's had a few, right? He's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, me, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like you? that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- 14. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, give us a go. He turns the transformer up to like 14. He went really fast for about five seconds broke it, and then he went back downstairs. 
Wow. So Christmas iron in got Sounds like the uh, Conservative government with uh, British Rail. Satire, eh? <laughs> Sat yeah, Rick, well. I just thought that there's sat satire. It's if there's any satirical it's, it's shows this in or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way because there's, there's, there's the analogy falls down no. apart from there being a train. Think it through though, British Rail was trains. <laughs> yeah. And the government broke the trains in many, well they didn't break them, like not officially breaking them, but they kind oh. of. Yeah. Yeah, it does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on Have I Got News For You. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Because it, it is strange. <laughs> when, yeah. when you've got a satirical mind that that's, that's as quick as that. Yeah. All and right. it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog yeah, everywhere? Well, no, like but I mean, that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're your kid, you, you know, he had his fun, put him to bed, put him to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and he was on Christmas Day, I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. I know. Well, don't have the party on Christmas Day, is Well, that's, point. that's, that's another option. Yeah. yeah. Your parents are weird, aren't they a strange breed? Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to, I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something, cause he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum, uh, there was a cheap shop. Right. Of course. Uh. Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right. I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So I thought, right. <laughs> she must be pleased with you then. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it? Is it like a brandy? Do you liqueur? remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum. Yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character. Right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I saw it. I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks. Right. Oh. Got that sorted. Went to Snips. Bought the uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in. I'm in town with her. Right. So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come, come in here a minute. Right. Uh, so we go in and we're looking around and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there, that's all right, innit? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just, I, I, oh, God. So then Christmas Day comes and I said, oh. don't bother opening it. She said, no, no, why? Said, oh, no, why don't you still give it to her? So, well, it's too late, I'd already bought it. Oh, Carl. So she opened it and I was like, <sighs> And she said, oh, that's nice. I said, why are you saying that? I said, the other day, he said, it's bloody awful. She said, oh, no, I thought you were pointing at something else. Oh, Brilliant. no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Play record! Oh, God! Oh! It was good, isn't it? What about? Gold Rush. Let you down. I'm, I'm actually quite affected by Carl's Victoria Plum scenario. Just the fact that, like, that, that eagerness, he, he wants to make sure it's a great present. He's saved up his paper round. He thinks it's like a gnome, but modern. I'm worried that you're using it as an excuse now, and that's why you're not buying anyone any gifts, because you've had your fingers burned once. I mean, you were six, seven years old. To be fair. No, you weren't. You were about 13, weren't you, if you're doing your paper round? Yeah, well, oh, it, must right. been, it must have been, yeah, 11 or 12 then. All right. Yeah, so I'd, I'd saved up. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not using it as a thing, it's just What'd that- What'd you get your mum this year? Um, I've sent them um, some money so they can, uh, get a passport. So they can get a passport? <laughs> what, what do you mean, where are, are they? Immigrants? Are they trapped no, somewhere? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're in a holding bay yeah. somewhere in Dover. Yeah, yeah they've got you a friend who's a truck driver who's <laughs> gonna <laughs> sneak them across. <laughs> for, for new what year. do you mean? <laughs> so they can buy a passport. What do they do? Sell it when they were no, a bit, <laughs> they're a bit down in their luck. <laughs> no, they, they haven't got that much money, right? They've never been abroad, and the mate said they might uh, tack them next year, and they said, "Oh, we haven't got a passport." You've so got thought, to buy a passport, have you? Isn't you that your God-given right as an Englishman? No, you've got to pay for them. They're thirty quid each, so you better add to, otherwise they're conning me. Right. <laughs> so you sent him sixty quid. You don't get born with a passport. Uh, you sent them sixty quid in an envelope, awesome. have you? Well, check. Right. No. I love that. And, uh, 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 if you're watching Teddy and uh, France will come on and they go, oh, what do you think of that? She goes, it looks bloody awful. <laughs> yeah, oh, don't, don't open it. No. Don't open it. <laughs> don't open it. So oh. you've not you've not paid for a holiday for them. You you've, you've no, you've I've just sorted out the well. It's it's the better prize, isn't it? Because they can't go anywhere <laughs> without it. Well, the passport <laughs> keeps on giving. Yeah, it's so. ten years, ten years. That yeah. that is yeah.
So, but no, I never used to, I mean, I can't <laughs> think of other things. I used to get me dad once, once I started getting him stuff, it used, sort of used to be a uh, dressing gown. Yeah. And then, but as an extra surprise, he used to put like a cigar in the pocket, so he'd think that was it. Yeah. Then he'd put it on and put his hand in the pocket. Right. And oh, then he'd just this? hit you because he thought you'd nicked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, dear. So you bought uh, him a jacket with a cigar? That's quite thoughtful. Yeah. Didn't you sneak a cigar once on yeah, Christmas? Yeah. Well, it was when, that's when they used to have like the big do's, like I say. You know, they were, they were known for it. Like the, f the whole estate used to know that. You know, we were having a party. Yeah. So, uh, so they'd all come round. So they'd all come round and you know, scab yeah. food and drink yeah. and that. And oh, pocket oh, yeah, I can't ornaments. imagine. I cannot imagine how unpleasant that must Awful. have been. Awful. Awful. And you yeah. locked in your bedroom with a broken train set. Yeah. And, and looking at Victoria Plum, <laughs> yeah. whatever that was. In the bin. Oh, in the bin, yeah. <laughs> and hear a mum saying, and he got me this. He got it, me this piece of rubbish. You could hear him just throwing it against the yeah. wall and, and laughing. All, and all the neighbours laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you'd come down and just be in pieces with loads of spit on it. <laughs> yeah. Just loads of garb on it. Eyes. And all the Polaroids of them just like laughing at yeah, him, and stamping on it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, all the flooding back. But no, um, no, I used to get up in the morning and then like, they'd still, still sort of all be there asleep on the floor and on the sofa. And oh, like, oh, that's awful. Oh. That's <laughs> terrible. Christmas is surely the one day a year which is a family thing. It's for the kids. They're the ones no, that No, that, that was Boxing Day. Well, I know. Oh, that's all right. It's, not, it's, it's, <laughs> over. it's over. Yeah. Back Christmas on the bike. All right. You, 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 yeah. who's, who's gonna pay for this? What, me? Yes, Carl. <laughs> yeah. You're doing two rounds today. I'll yeah, what's your paper round supporting the entire family? <laughs> yeah. No, so, so I used to get up and like go downstairs and they'd be asleep so I'd be mooching about trying to find like another present that's still working. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so, I yeah. love the idea that these people from the estate had like <laughs> squashed his presents. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I found a cigar that had been sort of lit up and then put out, so I thought, oh, I'll have a go at that. Yeah. I went outside and had a go and that's the last time I smoked. Right. Sort of, I tried it, I thought, I don't like that. I love the fact that he does everything once. Yeah. In yeah. his life. It's, like, it's a line of, I've done everything once, I don't need to do it again. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last thirty years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of like- <laughs> they just, like, in the fifties. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Like, yeah, <laughs> in the forties, it was brilliant, all sat around the old Joanna's, the bomb <laughs> yeah. <style> singing, they <laughs> loved that. In the fifties, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years, it was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together. And then the sixties came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been, well, I don't know, twenty years ago? She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that. She said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's right, you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Let's good news for he's my freezing. dad. He's freezing. freezing. He's freezing. He runs out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is very, it's such a weird a mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had like a big I potato to take well, to I, school. I, I, and no, a poop I, and a stick. Is a Christmas the gift. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. As a total dependent. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. It, yeah. it just pine away. If he dies, she's got thirty years of pottering. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like you know uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. I know what you mean, yeah. it, it's sort of like that. It's it, it's, sad, it's sad. Of course, it's sad for them, but it's so not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sure. sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that is. is. Yeah. it's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for. Uh, I know. I've really brought it. You brought it down. You've brought it down. I've brought it. Down. This isn't a nice show at all. This is terrible. Well, I We're gonna have really people make just it. killing themselves. Uh, what? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. Well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, it's just Play a record. I'm, not, I'm not religious or anything. <laughs> no. you, what are you? You're not anything. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.
Strange Fan Club from the XFM Christmas album, and that's Christmas Eve. Their guitar sounds are just brilliant. They're just always so nice. All right, Carl, would you like that? Would you like Teenage Fan Club? Yeah, yeah, they're good. They're right. Carl, I feel like you've never kind of enjoyed the wonder of Christmas. I don't think, I can't ever get the sense, maybe except when you were very, very young. You know, that kind of bright eyed, you know, thinking of Santa, you know, kind of um, landing on the roof and coming down the chimney and drinking the, the sherry or whatever. Well, I like I like the idea of it, right? Sure. The, the sort of, you know, uh, I used to like, I used to get a couple of annuals every year, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. So did I, yeah. And I was allowed to open one on Christmas Eve. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, just, yeah, so. <laughs> so they could throw it on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think the, uh, it is so well, the light is quick skin through. Yeah, yeah. I think so that's a light with cigar off the yeah. cooker. <laughs> oh. Well, anyway, listen. Um, a good friend of ours, Ross Noble, the comedian, brilliant. Uh, he's given me this picture, Carl, which he's got from a magazine. He loves you. He and thinks I have to say, I think this. <laughs> I'll just lose it then. <laughs> well, I, I'm, obviously, it's not going to mean much to the listener. Oh, this is something. But it is currently but available. I'm... I think it's in the current edition of Bizarre magazine. So, um, you might want to buy is that. It, it's not horrible, have... though, is it? It, it, it? There's there's a certain grotesqueness about it. Oh, it's a, just think it's I... a deformed person, but, isn't it? Well, to a degree. But I think what it's going to do for Carl is give him. I think just. I think for you and I, Rick, we're yeah. going to see his. Face. <laughs> Light up. Brighten up. Lighten up. up. Like opening a, a wonderful Christmas gift. Oh, you know what? I think I've seen this. Is this the one with the kid with the big head? I'll be honest with you, Carl, it is. Have you seen it already? No. Yeah. Let me just show it to you again so you can kind of have a look. I haven't seen it. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't be laughing at that. No, but that is like the kid who I went to school with. <laughs> <laughs> that is the same. That can't be the so same. So do you recognise him? <laughs> Seriously, that. that that is the same <laughs> thing, Yad. Oh, I mean, I have to say, oh, it does look sure. like it's been computer generated, it's so odd. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Um, but look at the, the chart's face. I look know. Look reaction. Well, don't take another photo of me. I'm, I'm not sure this is right. It's not right, it's not right. But I just, I was hoping that that would give you, Carl, just a little glimpse of, uh, so We've had a request wonder. as well on the, the, the best bits to someone wants to d uh, hear you talking about your mates with the big heads. <laughs> I don't oh. believe it, because every time we go there, I get, we get some sort of complaint about something. It's about what? Leave it. Well, it, that, for some reason, that always goes from the story with my dad going to Blackpool for <laughs> taking those kids there. And yeah. what kids? And, uh, for, leave it. No, no, what, what? No, I don't, no, there's people well, who don't know what you're talking I'll about. I'll tell you when we put a song on. No, well, I know what it is. Well, you can't you just say know, that. Well, is it when? Is it in. okay? Is it when your dad put a kid in the wheelie bin because <laughs> yeah. he was getting out of hand? Yeah. So well, we're going to be. We can't go through it we're again. Gonna, uh, it is too controversial. <laughs> we're going to. Uh, what's the name? No, well, the thing is, right? You were just saying about what are you about Christmas? <laughs> That's the funny thing, right? Because in our house, there's no one who's religious, right? No. no. My dad got annoyed when <laughs> I went to church that day. He was like, "What are you doing that for?" Of course. I went to see a gig in Liverpool. Remember the band, the Christians? Yeah. He thought I'd join some club. Yeah. I said, I've been to see the Christians. He was saying to me, man, what, what's he doing going out with them? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, <laughs> the other thing is, because I'm not christened or anything, my mum used to say to me, don't tell anyone that, because there's witches and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want to go back and see his upbringing. I really, yeah. I just want to go back and see him at seven. One day, one day in the life of Carl, just, age seven. Just have uh, three <laughs> ghosts visit him tonight <laughs> and take him back to his time. But uh, we could go with him. We go, well, we can meet some of the ghosts. Yeah, so the ghosts like, for Christmas past. Oh, you remember this? That's, um, that's oh. incredible. Sorry, sorry. Just, don't, don't, so, just she thought, so she wasn't Christmas, but well, she thought maybe someone could take your soul because well, you weren't Christmas. It's like, uh, <laughs> There's, there's cults <coughs> and that, isn't there? And if they find out you're not christened, then right. So I don't think they care. I don't think a lot yeah. of cults care. Well, but, but what can they do if you're if, if you're not Christian? I don't, I don't know. What, I just what? said all right because th then through that time there must have been a time when. But that hold on, was now a they know. Yeah, but I'm older now, so I'm all right. She used yeah. to worry about me playing out on the street. Oh, she was worried about whether you were naive and stupid and easily led. Well, yeah. yeah. No, 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 <laughs> good point. No, you're right now, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, good. Rock well, busters. Rock not. busters. Well, tell the prizes, Steve. Yeah, tell we have Christmas some, uh, gifts. This is Christmas, Christmas gifts. I don't know if you'll receive them in time to actually pass them off as gifts. I wonder if I can tell that, um, uh, Ross Noble story that he told us. I don't know. We'll have to Would discuss that when the record's playing. Okay. Right. Um, okay, so you heard a track from it just then, it's the XFM Christmas album. I think that's been knocking around here in the office for years, hasn't it, Carl? Um, or is it new this year? It was brought out about two years ago, okay. but Christmas, Christmas songs are Christmas songs, Christmas time, songs. Yeah, it's not bad. It's got bands on there like the Dandy Warhols, the Web Brothers are on there, Drugstore, Ben and Sebastian, Flaming Lips, all sorts. So we've got that to give away. We've also got this, um, Smashing Pumpkins compilation, which we seem, again, we s that seems to be knocking around for weeks. Another one of those 50 years of the greatest hit single 
festivals. I don't know, culture clubs on their queen, obviously. I've just Lennon. seen the cult film. Yeah, uh, the, com the cult film will come back to you shortly. This, I think, is one of the most exciting gifts. If you have a video <laughs> player and you want to get trim, then surely Big Brother 3 champion Kate Lawler and her cardio combat video, mm. in which I think she uses kind of, I don't know, military <coughs> boxing training to get you trim and taught and sure. looking as good as her. Then you can get that as well. We've also got, uh, a exclusive seven inch single from the White Stripes, a kind of Christmas single. Is that from them? Yeah, yeah. That must be quite rare. That's probably That's the only thing worth That's rare. That is worth something. And, um, something. the current Badly Drawn Boy album, Have You Fed the Fish, which well, that, I that, think that, is that, slightly that, mediocre. That, that, they've gone up, actually. I think that the, the level of prices there has gone up. Not a bad selection, but here is the big movie. And actually, I have to say, this is not a bad one. This no, is, it's not, uh, again, it's not, not terrible at all. It, quite c it could be worse. It's, uh, James Cann in the original Rollable, not the disastrous remake that came out no. recently, but, uh, the DVD version of Rollable. So that's there as well. So, something fairly interesting. That's gets, worth yeah. winning. Right, come on then. Let's do Rockbuster. Well, will we play a song to give people time to get a pen and paper and that? Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing it next. Yeah. Uh, Carl Pilkington. The man of the moment with his rockbusters coming your way with all his great prizes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, are we, uh, yeah. we're doing it now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I noticed Heat Magazine sort of put a bit of a spanner in the works. Why? Because they were saying, oh, maybe it'll be a Christmas edition of rockbusters. And I'd already sorted them out. I wouldn't worry, Carl. Well, what I've done, I've cleverly tweaked them to make them Christmassy. Oh so the Christmas bit in it has got nothing to do with, with it whatsoever. But I just thought. <laughs> so you mean yeah. the clues have a Christmas element? Well, yeah. But, 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 but it's nothing to do with the answer. Nothing, yeah, it's nothing to do with the answer. <laughs> right. So why don't you just ask the normal ones and I'll, I'll ring a bell. I'll yeah. shake some bell. Well, I'll go to the of that, but in sort of speech. Right. Brilliant. So the first yeah. one. Um, there's a load of letters. Uh, there, asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Oh, and, uh, have a good Christmas. Give it, give it to us again. <laughs> oh, God! Right, so, there's a load of letters asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Oh, and have a good Christmas. Right, right, but bear in mind, people, that the Christmas element may not be relevant no, to these clips. No, that's got nothing to do with it. I don't want to, okay. you know. And the initial letter is F, right? That's F. All right. Right, the second one. one. <laughs> uh, ask your mum if you should. After you've wrapped the presents. <laughs> right, so ask, ask your mum if you should. Ask your mum if you should after you've wrapped the presents. Go that's, on. um, <laughs> that's S. 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 All right. All right. Okay. And the last one. Um, a couple of people were arguing in the supermarket at the fruit and veg counter, but it's busy in there because it's Christmas. <laughs> 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 so that's probably what brought it on. So oh. that's, that's B. Right? Oh. B. B. Oh, God. So they're the, they're the three. Will I just, uh, recap? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I have so no idea. I can't even- one. I don't know what to start thinking. I, well. Right, there's a load of letters there asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Have a good Christmas. Uh, have a good Christmas. <laughs> uh, second one, ask your mum if you should. After you the prison. S. And the last one, a couple of people were arguing arguing in the supermarket at the fruit and veg counter. But it's busy in there because it's, it's Christmas. It's busy because it's Christmas. That's a B. Yeah. So they're the three things. It's email only. This one, uh, please remember that. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Mm. Uh, Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yep. Brilliant. Carl looks so happy with them. He's yeah, really he's happy with them. So they're cracking. Right, they're good. Yeah, they're good, please so. for all right. right. Is there going to be more rock, rock buses in the new year? We're not sure. Um, I'm, I'm still, you know, thinking about new ideas mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. do. Okay. Um, are we starting Ricky Ridiculous today? Have you done? Couldn't be thing? bothered. Couldn't right. be bothered. Couldn't be hard. Look right. forward to Ricky Ridiculous. Well, he's year. worried about. He nearly said asked, and he just stopped because he's yeah, worried because well, he's the producer. Yeah. Well, I've got a set of standard. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you have, mate. <laughs> you have. So that, that's that. We've still got to come, uh... Oh, I'll tell you what, why don't we have, um, a lovely tune, yeah. right? You make the tea, we're opening these biscuits from Alexandra, yeah. we'll be enjoying that, right? Maybe segue so we can have a nice little, you know, rest. I don't want to talk through it, it'd be rude. And then we're coming back, and as part of, like, Pilkington, Parkinson, <laughs> and do we need them? Do we need them? <laughs> yeah. Carl has interviewed an expert. On, on jellyfish. jellyfish. Brilliant. So we've got that. Plus, of course, we've got two part, a two part. Educating Ricky. You've got educating Ricky still. To With a Christmas theme or not? 
Um, and we've still got no. things like the Pogues, John Lennon, Joni Mitchell, just uh, uh, David Bowie. Are you, are you suggesting there's gonna be some great music and some great fun music chat? Great music and some fun chat. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, good. We've got our little biscuits, haven't we? Mm. Yeah, we're loving it, aren't we? Yeah. Um, I think I think I can just sum up the station, can't I, Steve? With that just last, last <laughs> comment, <laughs> you're probably right. Uh, I just came in. I just sort of went to the toilet there, and uh, um, uh, it's a disabled toilet that's close to it. So uh, you know, you go there. I had a wee. I thought, oh, the thing doesn't work. Didn't flush. I came back. I said, oh, the the toilet doesn't work. Doesn't flush. And uh, Carl went. No, you just stick your hand down and pull the that wire up at the. <laughs> Think of that. Put your hand in the water. I mean, just when, in the that, when, water. when David Bowie uh, interviewed Zoe, um, come on, yeah, uh, it's torn off last. She goes, all right, baby, just stick your hand down, pop the shit down the uh, down the U bend, <laughs> and just wipe your hands on your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks very much. <laughs> I mean, oh. Sums up this station, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Tin pot. Have you ever done this? This is one of my most embarrassing moments. Is co you know, because sometimes you'll see, you'll <laughs> see. <laughs> eh? Well, I, you'll you'll realise what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened, Rick? Was I I almost leapt to the end of the story, <laughs> right? But I realised I had to go back a few steps. Yeah. I right. just said, have you ever cut? Well, you stop. <laughs> it was going to be coming, but it, but you'll understand in a minute when I finish the story okay. that it's not coming in the traditional sense. All right. Because it also it's followed by coming out of. Oh, sure. All right. Yeah. So- And not your trousers. <laughs> oh, my trousers. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, now, awkward moment, and I should just, you know, if you're Christmas shopping, maybe you're in a big department store, mm. and, um, you see the disabled toilet, and you think to yourself, I can nip in there, I can use that, you know, because mm. it's close to hand, because I've got to wander miles for the regular toilets. I went in there once, in the toilet, you know, da -da -da -da, disabled toilet, just snuck in, came out, disabled person. Furious. That was, but it's really awkward because oh. it's like because it is like it's their sort of private domain. You know, it's like it's like they're part of an exclusive club. They've not got many perks in life, and that's one of them. And here I was, <laughs> you know, kind of kind of exploiting it. But they can't. Well, yeah, I suppose they can be annoyed. But, but it what did you do? Look did you do affect a limp? I do you know. I normally do. <laughs> I often do. I often I've, I've affected a limp many times. Oh. Um, uh, like for instance, yeah, if I take the lift in a building when it's only one flight of stairs. Right, and they know, and I get up on the first floor. I always affect a limp coming out, <laughs> so that justifies why I haven't come up the stairs. <laughs> like, who is it that I'm scared is going to sort of <laughs> say something? Yeah, but uh, oh dear, that's that's it's the same thing as if someone asks me for directions. I always pretend I'm foreign. I always go, I don't. Um, why do you do that? I can't, because I'm just terrified of giving them the wrong directions. And well, then, just now I don't know. I don't live from I don't because I'm sort of, you know, I feel bad. Because what I used to sort of give directions because I like giving directions. I like helping people out. But then I realised I didn't really know. You, hang, you used to hang around going, you alright? Yeah, we're <laughs> fine, yeah. Do you want to know where to go? I tend to have a go even if I don't know. Exactly. But it's, I'm always terrified they'll come back and find you and go, you led us yeah. astray. Yeah. So I, now I just affect a foreign accent. <laughs> there's, there's, a fella, you know. there's a fella the other day, about two weeks ago, when I was walking in. Little old woman, little old fella, come up to me, and said, uh, "Where's uh, Wimpole Street?" So I said, uh, oh, "I do know it." So I think it's over there. And um, then I'm not very good with street names, but I'm good that if you say, "Oh, there's a boot on it," right. do you know what I mean? If there's something near it, I'm, it's like the same with directions. When I, when I used to drive a lot, yeah, or historical facts. I didn't. I don't know like old motorway names, you no. know, like M, uh, M this and M that. Mm. I can never remember that, but my dad used to always say, right, there's a horse in the field, turn right, and yeah. stuff like that. Good stuff, yeah. Um, and it's the same with this fella, he sort of said, you know, <laughs> where's, where's Wimpole Street? And I said, well, what are you after? And he said, no, I'm after some blood. And exactly. it was a blood. Blood. Yeah, there's doctors around there, isn't they? So I was like, oh. So that didn't help me. What do you mean he was after some blood? He said, oh, I need some blood. He must have had was an he illness. Bleeding? No, he just must have had, needed some new blood or something. He had some illness. And I was like, you know, I could, if it- if Why didn't he go to the pet shop and get some power? No, but- like He that. didn't have fangs and a cape, did he? <laughs> no, yeah. but do you know what I mean? Oh, that, that didn't help me out. But- What if he said, well, some pile cream, actually? Can you- You go, oh, we, we want boots then? Yeah, I would, he would've been alright. But I didn't know where to start with that. I need some blood. Yeah, That's I just it's over there. Yeah, it's sort of pointed him away. But so he was- he was <laughs> losing consciousness. <laughs> you sent him the wrong way. <laughs> He's dragging himself <laughs> along the pavement. <laughs> Is there blood this way? <laughs> oh. The gap, she's growing ever deeper. Well, oh. we've got to, uh, we've got to do, uh, Pilkington, haven't we? Do you want to? Yeah. Okay, we should explain this, I think. Well, it's this is Carl's new idea for, yeah. um, a TV show. <laughs> he wants to do, uh, a TV show called Do We Need Him, where he goes round. And, uh, he talks to experts like David Atten, David Bellamy, maybe Lenny Henry doing David Bellamy. Right, <laughs> yeah. If he can't get the real 
one. Um, and, uh, he just picks on an animal that he doesn't really like, doesn't think you need him, and an expert will tell him, uh, if we do, if this is the first instalment. Let, let me put a song on, right? Now we've got them, and then I can set it up okay. and stuff and tell, you know, because- I'll Explain it fully. Explain it and that. Let's do a classic, let's do a big stomp in one of the best Christmas songs of all time, shall we? What are you thinking? Fairy Tale in New York. Excellent. Oh, it's always a home featuring Christian McCall on XFM 104.9, the Christmas edition. Indeed. Next week, we've had loads of just suggestions, Carl, for, for your best bits. It's basically all your best bits. Me and Steve are largely irrelevant in the, in the voting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you can compile y your best bits next week and they'll be loving it. We've, we've had a request for the, the, uh, little Chinese fellow in his pants, a horse in the house, Cutting your hair on the railway, railway station. If I mean, if you haven't heard those stories, <laughs> they, 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 what does that mean? <laughs> the little China one in your pants. You've got to be tuning in next week to find out what that is. The only thing is, the old uh, horse in the house was in the last best of. Was it? Yeah. Well, that yeah. that doesn't stop. What's his name? If you're one of those people that want <laughs> yeah. to see these clips again, yeah, tune in. Oh, yeah, it'll, be right, Christmas. it'll be all right so. on the night, 84. Yeah, yeah. Someone kill me. <laughs> <laughs> one I one think I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> it's like we said before, who goes to the recording of one of those? <laughs> all the people in the audience. <laughs> yeah. Aren't there? That'd people be great. Actually, Tickets for it'll be all right on the night. And they laugh at his jokes, but I mean, I, I don't know I what the jokes I think how many are. takes it, you know, I mean, oh, how long yeah. it takes to record that. The, the, the show's about three hours, so the recording must be about nine. Have you, uh, ever seen Kirsty's home videos on Sky I One? I think so. I think it's, so. Uh, it's do Gallagher. dogs falling down slides. It's like, yeah, it's like you've yeah, been framed, but it's- Falling over in a wedding. It's got audience laughter. But I'm assuming it can't be a real audience. I'm assuming it must be like- No, they just, they, they've, they've lifted- they've laughter. just lifted it from the Flintstones. Yeah. <laughs> the laughed from the Flintstones, yeah. A lot of yeah. forget that the Flintstones had an audience. <laughs> if you- if you watch <laughs> the Flintstones, there's laughter when Fred does something funny. Yeah. <laughs> the idea of people should be shipped in but we were to watch about, a cartoon. I like the idea that some jokes weren't as funny <laughs> as exactly. others. Like the director going, we'll put a laugh on that and the producer yeah. going, it's not as funny. I think Dino should, get funny. Dino should get a round of applause every time he comes in. He, everyone loves him. The kids love him. Well, he's well, 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 we're making it up. Yeah, yeah. and Barney getting disgruntled because his jokes never get this. <laughs> yeah, he's like wise. Exactly. Yeah, he's really wise. Okay, anyway, Carl, so here we go. It's an yeah. it's a exciting feature that will, I, I think, will be picked up by Channel Five. Uh, it's going to be Carl Pilkington. Do we need him? Where Carl goes around checking out animals with uh, top experts, asking whether we need them in the world. Yeah. So. Um, we yeah, this is the first one, we won't do it next week, but I'm already sorting out the contact, we will be looking at octopus, cause they're a bit weird. Okay. So that's, that's what you got to look forward to in two, you know, in, in, you know, Again, three. if you have an animal that you <coughs> feel is unnecessary in the world, then email us and I'm yeah. sure Carl will investigate for you. Well, yeah. the other thing as well, whilst we're on to that, I wanna sort of have a better research with me, so when I speak to the, like, the bloke or the woman about the octopus, right, um, I want, like, You wanna be response. armed with the facts? Well, sort of response from listeners, so I can say, well, 70% of XFM listeners said we should get rid of them. Sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Like John Snow does on Channel 4 when he does all, like, <laughs> politics stuff. Yeah. So, if you agree with me, just send an email mm. saying yes. Well, so, so, so yes, we should get rid of them. Yes, yeah. Or yes, get rid of them. Because you're, you're, you're always, you're, the house believes always we should get rid of these animals. That's, you're picking animals you want to get rid of. So yes is get rid of them. No is... Don't get rid of well, them. Well, and not no, it's Noah, because they go on the ark. The ones we keep go on the ark. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> element I'd completely forgotten about, and I think that's a wise move, because <laughs> I don't think that's working. I don't think you've thought through the whole Noah. So, and that's just complicating in the show, I think. So, so yes, yes, we get rid of them. Noah, they're <laughs> saved on the ark. Yeah. Right, okay, right, so lovely. here we go then. Jellyfish. So, we, uh, we today them? we're looking at jellyfish in Pilkington. <laughs> Talking to uh, to Vicky, who works in an aquarium in in Anglesey, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Right, brilliant. Uh, today we want to find out if we really need jellyfish. I've got a bit of a problem with them anyway, because because I've been I've been stung by one, and I've done a little bit of research into them. So I'll tell you what I know about them. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you might learn some stuff from me. Oh, well, you never know. And if I'm talking nonsense, just just tell me. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, right. So first of all, they don't have eyes, do they? No, they don't. Right. No. So I'm right with that. Uh, no lungs. No lungs. They haven't got a heart. 
No hearts, heartless. And they're made up of like 97% water. Yes, they are. So they're pretty useless, really. Well, they have got a nervous system. Um, they're actually about 650 million years old. So they, they've evolved and they've outlived the dinosaurs and they're even older than the sharks. And they can even outfox us. Um, because NASA scientists have worked with them to try and work out how they um, operate in weightlessness, and they still don't know how they do that. Took them into space actually to figure out how that they did how they did that. Seems like a bit of a waste of money, but yeah. um, do you know Port Maddock? I used to go there a lot for my holidays, and there used to be a load of them washed up on the beach. Uh, People on motorbikes used to go over them and stuff. Yeah. So, well, we get the ge the moon jellyfish. That's the ones with the They've got pink bits in the middle. Yeah, that's they're, their they're, reproductive body. I think that I think that was them. I think they're the ones who went over on the bike because you could yeah. see pink bits. What what do they do? If the jellyfish went, would would we have a problem on our hands? Do you think? Okay, um, you might have a bit of a knock on effect because um, things like turtle will eat um, jellyfish. Yeah, but do we need turtles? Uh, well, don't forget that when you take out one, when you take out something from the marine system, mm. something normally feeds on. I mean, they're not just there for the fun of it. Something either feeds on it or feeds on what they excrete. Um, what you're saying is they exist to sort of feed others and also to eat some stuff that's Well, yeah, they control the population of other fish and species that might otherwise be a problem. Okay, well, let's, let's kind of wrap this up, right? Um, the question that, that I'm asking today is do we need them? Say if, say if, um, Noah... Yeah. ...had his ark... <laughs> right, you're, you know, you've swam and got on the boat, you're all right, you're safe, he's going to keep you to sort of populate the world as well, right, so it's you and him. Uh-huh. He's not a bad-looking fella, so, so you're happy. Yeah. Um, he says to you, Vicky, uh, do we need him? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't even know why she even gave you that interview. When you start off with, right, you know, trying to find out if I need you, but what did you tell her to get her to talk to you? Just, uh, just said I'm doing some research on stuff. Uh... Did she think you were a schoolboy or something? No, she just, she just said, oh, all right. She said, you know, how long will it go on? It's not long. Just, like, five minutes. Have a quick chat. And she was, she was, loved it, didn't she? She sounded happy to take part in that. So, the fact I love the fact that you've got an expert and you, you suggest that she's going to be having sex with Noah. <laughs> He's a good fellow, so you're happy. She goes, yeah. I mean, I don't know why you stopped there, didn't go into <laughs> positions or something. I, I, I can't be- The problem is, really, I didn't get to the bottom what, of what I wanted to say because- Oh, no, you did. That's it. That's, uh, that's done I've, now. I've that's, that's a pretty a good minutes. academic work. That's proved, you know. No, but the turtle thing, you know, when she said, oh, if you get rid of them, the turtles, you know, won't have anything to eat. But when she said that, I mean, I couldn't say it because it would have took her off and confused her. But well, like, she's a scientist; she's easily confused. Well, say yeah. like when when Suzanne is working, right? I'm not a very good cook, so I always get like an Indian in. Right? What to do the cooking for you? <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I'll have an Indian. Right now, say if for some reason it closed, I'd get a Chinese. <laughs> So why, why don't the turtle just, there's loads of stuff in the sea, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't want to get too heavy on her, but, <laughs> uh, <is> pretty deep. <coughs> oh, that is genius. But we'll look at, uh, But so the fact that she said, yes, you need, uh, you need jellyfish, mm. does that mean that you've changed your, I mean, what I'm saying is, does her answer go? Does that stand? Yeah, it does, yeah. It does, does it? It does, yeah. Whatever the, I, I get the expert to say, I try and get them in a corner. Right, <laughs> you try and, yeah, argue yeah. them into a corner. Argue them into a corner, but that time she wasn't having any of it, so we've got to carry on having them. Yeah. So in, right. in, in the new year we'll be looking at octopus. Okay. okay. Yeah? Yeah, great. Let's Brilliant. play some feeder. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. I think there's often- Carl with his Victoria Plum. I want to see a Victoria Plum. I want to know what it is. Is it, is it, does it look like a little gnome? It's, it's a, it's a woman gnome. A female gnome? Yeah. A little gnome. Well, and, yeah. um, and, uh, did your mum collect gnomes? She likes anything gnomes. She likes fairies. She likes, uh, Indians. 
She collects all that stuff. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what she it is. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, like a proper Indian with all the ad gear on. Oh, a native American. Yeah, yeah. She likes anything with them on. Like, you know, it can be a fridge magnet. <laughs> it can be, uh, Yeah. Just, just a lot of Native American wisdom is is around the fridge magnet because they yeah. think it has special powers of adhesion. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's, you read some of their their, their <laughs> the writings, works, yeah. the great works. <laughs> um, now uh, <laughs> it reminds me. Talking of gnomes, um, he said to me in the week. He went, "Ah, oh, did you see that program on telly last night about dwarves and fellows without legs nicking cars?" And I went, no. He went, oh, it's amazing, right? Because they haven't got legs and that. They scoot along and they can nip into a car like the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> Explain more, Carl. <laughs> no, you see, I didn't see it. Someone else told me about it. Oh! That's what I said to you. I said, did you see it? Because I missed it. And it's about these <sighs> these little fellas um, who uh, specialise in car nicking. <laughs> and the thing I wanted to know is, because this lad who sort of watched it only watched half of it. Is he like you? Well, I said, I can understand how it's easy to get in, but then how do you get away? Because you can't reach the pedals. Yeah. Can there be two of them? But presumably he opens yeah, the car for someone else. Good, is it? What do you mean? What, so he's steering and he's like, right, press the brake a bit. And then there's, then there's one that's just legs, but without the top half. I don't understand <laughs> how this helps them, though. What are they, what, why are they, why does this make it easier for them to because steal Because they cars? can just get through the window really quickly, like in the Dukes of Hazard. What? <laughs> Because their legs don't get in the way. Right. Do they just run? And just... But what do you mean, we? the wind? I mean, what? So someone's driving along... No, I didn't see it. And leaves the window open. You. I didn't, I didn't see it. Do they it. leap in when there's someone still driving the car? I don't know. Well, there's too many things left unanswered here. I well, can't well, go maybe someone's seen it and they can there. email in. But that sort of... Miss panicked you anyway, I imagine. <laughs> I bet you were gutted you missed that programme, weren't you? Well, I would have, I'm interested in stuff like that, because I like <laughs> learning, which gets us on to educating Ricky. Oh, excellent. Slick. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a good year of stuff, teaching we have stuff. Well. Yeah, I've uh, learned a lot. Can you remember any of the Of course highlights? I can. There was a deaf girl and she hit her head and she could hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was also, um, some people who ate tomatoes like they poisonous on lead. There was also a fella who, a doctor who gave a blood transfusion, um, with some parrots from the pet store. Yeah. Um, because, uh, the doctor in America, and it was the olden days, when the lines were bad, said, give him his parents' blood, and the doctor this side thought said, give him some parrot's blood. So that was true, <laughs> and that educated me. That was fact. What have you got for us? Well, we've only got two, because I've taught you about jellyfish today, that yep. we need them, so we've only got two, two things to go at, and the, uh, the, I give them a little headline so you remember them, to make them snappy. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. the two headlines you've got, oh, what a catastrophe. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. and the second one is, well, you'd think it'd be Bughead, wouldn't you? <laughs> what? Well, you'd think it'd be Bughead, wouldn't you? You'd think it beat... No, you'd think it'd be... Yeah. You'd think it'd be Bughead, wouldn't you? Bughead. 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 This can't be... If this is anything with a, a bug living without a head, I'm not interested. Because we've done it. All, All you've right, done is well, fun. Let's, let's just do oh, what a cat. <laughs> so is that? Is, well, well, do that one first. Which one? Which one are we no, doing? No, do the bughead one. Right. Well, the bug, <laughs> the bughead one. Uh, well, we've we've talked a, a lot about animals and that, haven't we? Without heads. <laughs> <laughs> no, Surprisingly, we have. <laughs> I think a disproportionate amount. On it. <laughs> if you're a new listener, and this is the first time you've listened. You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've done all that. We've done. We've covered uh, worms. The way if you cut their head off, it grows back. If you don't <laughs> cut too too high above its neck. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered <laughs> the chicken, um, the fella who blinked. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can't go into it again. Right, let's not go into it again. Ah! We've had um, <laughs> the chicken with no head that lived yeah. for eight months. Yeah, and we've had, and we've cockroaches. had the cockroaches living for a week without an egg. Right, right. okay. Well, it's, it's a bit more on the, on the cockroach front, really. Right. Um, they found right that if you get a cockroach yeah. and you cut its head off, yeah. Right? Yep. And then you find a cockroach that's still got its head, but it hasn't got any legs. Right. Right? It's not over for both of them. Right? Because what you can do, you get the one that's got the legs. Right. With no head. Yep. Sort of running around. Get the one with the head. Uh -huh. Sit it on top of it. Right. Get a little tube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that the fluid. So is this? Is this? Aunt is go out of the Let room. This is like Blue Peter. Let him you can get. You can get this for Christmas. Right. You yeah. get a little tube. You sit that on top, so the bodily fluids are still running between the two. Right. The head 
of the one on the top will control the feet of the one on the bottom. Okay. What about that? Good. And, uh, will it continue to live? Um, yeah. Okay, you don't know that for sure, do you? <laughs> that, that was just a, that was just no, a question that the really wasn't expecting. That, yeah. what, what do you think of that? It's good, yeah, it's great. Yeah, just a primitive nervous system that can, yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you expect us to be more impressed and excited by that? Well, did you fall off your chair when you read that? <laughs> <laughs> did you literally topple off going, Did, you, did you think you were gonna be the Frankenstein of the insect world? Yeah. No, I just was thinking if they can do that, you know, with, with them, can they do it with humans? Because yeah. I, I also did a bit of research of on- you did. did you ever- did you- did you come to the, um, sort of conclusion that apart from the moral aspect of it, well, that the human was probably more complicated than- Yeah, but, do you know what I mean? Things- things move on, don't they? Do you know Modern I mean? science, Rick. You know, I had- I had Binatone as a kid. Now they've got PlayStation 2 and the difference in ten years They is have amazing. found that if- if you lose your head, a cockroach can live normally on your body, but not the other way around. Your head on its cannot control its legs, cause it's yeah. too complicated it's for too your confusing. brain. Uh, so, uh, it, yeah. Well, so- then- then other research, uh, cause I thought if you don't learn from that, I'll give you something else for free, right? Go on. Um, <laughs> free. that they, uh, can clone people. Uh-huh. The only reason they don't do it, right? Say if like Ricky needed uh, a lung, right? They <laughs> could clone you and make you the same. But the only reason they don't want to do it is because it, it'd be a bit horrible, wouldn't it? So and, and, and it would ta and it would take sort of eighteen years for me to get an adult lung. And there's all kinds of moral implications. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? You hadn't thought so, of that. So, sorry, so, cos- uh, lest, lest we forget, Rick, <laughs> he ended with the only reason they don't do it is cos it's a bit horrible and that. <laughs> 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 Which scientist said that? <laughs> right, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a that quote. Right. Well, that's not, that's not it. That's not the other one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, 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 that was, that was just, you know. We've got another one to come. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Just the, the headline again, what was the headline the again? The headline, oh, what a cat toe strophy. Looking forward to <laughs> it. Bit of Mark. Yeah, a bit of Mark Heintzel. Yeah. This is from his, um, cover's album, which is called Snowbird. <laughs> He's so happy that the XMM listeners understand his stupid clues, and he knows it annoys me. We've well, got some right answers we'll for out the answers this. just quickly, just in case, uh, Someone sort of missed one of them, I'll just quickly do them, yeah? Yeah, go on. First one, there's a load sure of letters. Show. <laughs> there's a load of letters there asking for advice, put them on Claire's desk. Oh, and Merry Christmas. Uh, ask your mum if you should. Oh, and Merry Christmas. And, uh, a couple of people were arguing in the supermarket. It at was the Christmas, and that's why. Counter. And that's B. Okay, we'll give those answers out shortly. Yeah. I just have to show you something, Rick, before we move on. I know we've got another uh, educating Ricky, but uh, someone just sent this in. Yeah. They've been looking on eBay yeah. for Victoria Plum. You're joking. Come here and see the photograph. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Hello. Yeah. Hello. That's it. Oh, God, he got that for his mum. <laughs> it's the worst piece of tat I've ever oh, seen. Oh, Carl! You, oh, Carl. Imagine how. Oh, Gutted. Oh, imagine how. Look, think of him now, right? The, there it is. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever seen! I tell you, it looks like a Diddy man gone wrong. It's it looks like a Diddy man prostitute. <laughs> that is. That's a, is that the one colour? Oh, so, that... Well, it was a different colour, it had a yellow at mine. <laughs> no, but look, how do they get telling them they're okay, so, um, going to eBay? So you need to, uh, to log on to ebay.co.uk. I'm sure you've used it before, it's the uh, online marketplace, ebay.co.uk. And if you type in Victoria Plum, I'm assuming that you can yeah, track yeah, this down. That's day. amazing. It's the worst piece of rubbish oh, I've ever seen. just think how cute he was as a kid, though, doing that. Just think of him, just going... <laughs> just that was, just, just seeing that and it. thinking, oh, I like... <laughs> she likes gnomes! <laughs> it's the worst thing I've ever seen! I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what her prize collection of gnomes looks like, but I can't imagine they're much better than that. I mean, gnomes are a fairly oh. grotesque thing. Yeah. But oh. certainly your mum's taste and discretion is, is- Did you have any- did you have a, those houses on your estate, you'd go in there and it was just loads of those dolls still in their packaging all around the room? And sort of like, one of those homes that all, keeps the, uh, sort of packaging on the three-piece suite. Why don't you buy another one for her for Christmas? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's three ninety-nine. it looks, but it's, 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 that's two pounds <laughs> forty-nine. Cause that it's was three ninety-nine like dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buy it, Carl. Yeah, I've got her, I've sorted out her passport this year, anyway. I'll get her that next year. Right, <laughs> so listen, right. right? Okay. So, last <laughs> educating Ricky of the oh, year. Oh, Christ. Um, what a cat toast. Yeah, let's do that then. Right. <laughs> Victoria Plum. There's this woman, right? 
<laughs> yeah. This woman, she's reading, uh, Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. And, um, she- she's flicking through. Yeah. And she notices that there's a world record for a cat, right, with, uh, 27, uh, toes, right? <laughs> so she reads it and she thinks, well, that's not right, cos her cat's got 28. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean her cat's got 28? Her cat- uh, her cat's got 28 toes. So she was like, well, hang on a minute, mine should be in there. So there was oh, like- I missed the very beginning of this. She- she was- she- 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 Right. It gets through a lot of nail varnish. Well, yeah, that's- that's what it said, right? It said it's really good in the snow. So, I just was thinking, uh, I mean, that's it, really. That's, that's not it. That's the end of that story. But Brilliant. What but what I'm thinking is, right- It was she, two cats welded together. No, she- she said, uh, you know, it's happy. So, is the other sort of disabilities where, in a way, it's not all bad? Oh, Christ. <laughs> No, do you know, like, that book Steve brought in for me? And yeah. there was a fella there, wasn't there, who had three legs, who was a juggler. <laughs> and I was like, what's the point of that? <laughs> what do you mean, what's the point of that? What's the point well, of what? he's not taking advantage of uh, having three legs, is he, being a juggler? <laughs> he said he should be a footballer! Right? So... <laughs> but, no, but in a way, he's used it, hasn't he? He's probably not even that good at juggling. But, because he's got three legs, people have gone, well, I'll give him a chance. Let's go and see him anyway, see if he's any good. Yeah. Right? So, what I'm thinking is... Is there anything else? We've mentioned, uh, the- the midgets today who are good at robbing cars. Because uh-huh. they can get through the windows like Dukes of Isaac. Sorry, sorry, so listen, listen, I- I'm look, um, I'd just like to say, this is the Radio Authority listening, we are in no way suggesting that one, uh, midget's forte in life is robbing cars, no, or no, that no, if you're no. a midget sitting at home feeling sorry for something, you should go out robbing cars. I'd no. just like to say, this is oh. Carl Pilkington talking. No, the no, no, views no. of Carl Pilkington do yeah. not necessarily <laughs> reflect those of XFM <laughs> or us. Yeah, yeah. but it was a TV programme, so it's not me, I'm just saying what I've seen on TV. That you didn't see? That somebody saw me about. Yeah, so you could be wrong, just like a lot no. of your spurious facts no. you just see on the internet. You well, know. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, is there anything else? We've seen the fellow with the three legs. So what you're saying is, is there a disability that is actually an advantage? Yeah. Right, I mean, okay. He, Steve mentioned about the disabled Lou. They're always really roomy and, like, got multi-gym facilities <laughs> in them. <laughs> multi-gym facilities! Oh, you know multi-gym I mean? facilities! What do you mean, Carl? There's always bars everywhere and that, isn't there? That's not parallel bars. Yeah, That's they don't do gymnastics! Up. What, what are you yeah, working yeah, out? But I'm just- I'm just saying though, do you know what I mean? So in a way, they've- they've got that. So, always- what I'm saying is, when you look on the brighter side, <laughs> that elephant man would have never got up and gone, oh, look at me hair today. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do you! No, but- do you know what I mean? <laughs> He, he, he would never have that problem. You're a maniac. Forget it. I no. thought we'd be able to like, get a serious discussion going here. <laughs> well, okay then. So, this is a serious discussion, is it? Yeah. Okay, well, let's treat it sensitively then. If you really want a serious discussion and talk about whether there are some disabilities that are an advantage, let, let, let's, let's, let's think of some then, shall we? Well, I've, I've said three already. <laughs> yeah. You can't say, um, uh, uh, if you're deaf, um, uh, Bobby Davro won't annoy you. That doesn't count as an advantage. Do you understand? Do you know what I mean? Carl's looking at you thinking, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll leave it then. <laughs> I'll come up with a better feature for next year. Oh. We'll, we'll bin that, we'll bin that. <laughs> oh, so, God. So you've got any disabilities. We'll bin that like that was gonna be a feature. <laughs> what, you were hoping that that would be a spin-off feature? Disabilities well, are actually well, an advantage. another form of, do we need them? It's like, But that's, know. Carl, think of it, it's like the- it's like that joke. A bloke that, as he wakes up in hospital, says, good news and bad news. Bad news is we've had to amputate both legs. What's the good news? The fellow in the next bed wants to buy his slippers. See, that's not an advantage. Mm. It's a joke. That doesn't really happen. People don't go, oh, that is good news. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably get a quid for him. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> but the fellow with three feet, what would he do? Well, he'd buy a pair and then just nick one of those because they put out one shoe, don't they? Are those, um, yeah, if you've got one leg, you can nick shoes. Mm. Good point, right, Carl. Now, now I'm getting you thinking. Yeah. Right, so we'll do Rockbusters answers next then. Happy Christmas, war's over and all that. Indeed. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant tune.
Gretchen and well, well, I've, had, I've had a great time. I've had a great time. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope we haven't offended you by some of Carl's rantings. Just think, just, just think of what he's gone through in his life. No right. Victoria Plum incident. Carl, I've got a little gift for you here before we go. Oh, you say, okay, uh, I haven't got you anything. Well, no, I don't, you haven't got your girlfriend anything. I wasn't expecting much. It's not, it's, it's not, uh, exciting, but it's worth taking. In fact, you could, why don't you just re-gift that straight away? It's all right, cheers for that. Cha yeah. It doesn't even look at it. Champagne, yeah. champagne, champagne. Yeah. champagne. Yeah, that's not the champagne we got free from the BBC, is it? It's not actually, no, Rick, because, um, that is far too good for the likes of Carl. Oh, right. And I wasn't gonna give it to you, you wouldn't appreciate it, that's just sparkling wine. Oh, you know? brilliant, oh, I love that. Yeah, he won't, he doesn't know the difference. Um, um, I'm seeing Carl on Christmas Day, because, uh, he's around Christmas Day in London, so I'll, I'll, I'll get a little gift then, Carl. All right. That'd be good, wouldn't it? It'd be a nice little... Okay, answers. We must give the answers. You would have to go to bed at six, though, so right. we can play. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's the last clues of the year. You had, uh, there's a load of letters there asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Go that on, was no F. That was for Foreigner. For Rainer. I don't know what you mean. Claire Rayner, she took advice, she gave people advice, so that's a foreigner. Oh, I that is shit. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, that <laughs> might be Christmas, that is absolute dark. A lot of people got the right answer. I know, yeah, well that annoys right, me even well. more. Number the two. The second one, ask your mum. Foreigner. Yeah. Foreigner. Um, second one, ask your mum if you should. That was S, that was Shalimar. 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 Right? No, bizarrely, what was the clue there? Ask your mum if you should. Now, we got a lot of people saying Smashing Pumpkins as the answer to that. <laughs> well, I don't know who's saying that to their mum. Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, mum. Smashing Thanks Pumpkins. Thanks very much. <laughs> nice bollocks. <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, that's <laughs> great. That's great. Right. Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> your dad bought them for me for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Ah. And the last one, um... <laughs> Lovely plums. <laughs> <laughs> what my Victorians? <laughs> oh God! Right, we've got to wrap uh, it up. We've got to wrap it up. Come on then. Uh, a couple of people were arguing in the supermarket at the fruit and veg counter. <laughs> that was B. That was banana drama. Who were like having an argument? What do you mean banana drama? drama? <laughs> what, no, wait, 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 wait. What group is banana drama? What group is banana drama? So. You're a fool. You're a twat. <laughs> well, you say that, but you accuse her, you accuse Carl of that. You're also accusing lots of the listeners, including the winner, yeah. Nicola Rogers, uh, of London. And she wins those great prizes, and she got them bang on, so. Banana so drama. Can, so, can we finish there now? Yeah. yeah what I do you mean? We, what do you mean, can we finish there now? Just, just play the ads and go. What? No, we, what are you talking about? We're gonna play Jamie Nichols. Jamie Nichols, we're gonna all day. We'll play that now. Goodness, we can't. Oh, look at you. Oh, we haven't got time. Merry Christmas, Carl. Merry Christmas, Carl. Let's give him a little kiss. Uh, oh, a little kiss. Oh, no, I get tongues. With tongues, it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, Carl. 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 It's the best of. You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. Carl Pilsen in the chair now, the, um, oh, the talked about, the acclaimed, educating Ricky. Right, well, just in case anyone's new, doesn't mm. normally listen, yeah. um, basically, I'm educating Ricky, yeah. uh, do a bit of research in the week, find stuff, news, history, anything that's interesting, um, three stories, I give them a nice little headline, you take your pick, yeah. between now and three, you're gonna learn three things. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the headlines are, um, I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give us that again. I'll be no buying one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah. Uh, Cream. we've also got, uh, Hippopotter News. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, uh, Chicken You Believe It. <laughs> chicken You Believe It. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to go Hippopotter News. The yeah, news? News. Yeah. Right, well this one, it's, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna take the credit here, I heard Christian talking about this on Breakfast, right, cause it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't know if I told you about it last week when we were having our spaghetti, but, um, <laughs> no, I think you did! Right, I know what it is! I know what this oh, God, is! I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget, right, there's a circus, I'm loving it already. circus going on somewhere, I think it was in America. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> is that present day or old times? I'm talking like in the last three weeks. Okay. Right? Uh, little midget, 
uh, circus, really <laughs> packed out show, people are loving it. Um, <laughs> Steve, you'll ask the same question I did, I know. So, um, so there's little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's what I said, because it's Right. Yeah. Take good money to see it. So everyone, everyone's clapping and he's getting carried away. Because um, <laughs> he can't believe he's that. He can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was it was getting out of hand. <laughs> but he was jumping and he was coming down the road going higher and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's he's doing this. Crowd are clapping. There's a hippo, right, just sat next to the trampoline, getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh, right, I thought he was in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> <There's a hippo. laughs> getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, the, the he's hippo. a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because it's... Why do they sit in the dressing room and they go, <laughs> five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Moss, five minutes, Mr. Moss. So, anyway, right, <laughs> so the hippo's there, uh, <laughs> He's I'll getting annoyed because this because the midget is getting into his time. I'm gonna follow this. I'm gonna. This is really yeah. annoying. They're gonna be. Yeah. Oh yeah. no! So <laughs> he's thinking. He's already done the trampoline. My pogo stick. Out. He's never gonna work. <laughs> yeah, go on. So is it for waiting? Uh, this this see, it's a great story, and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So so there's a midget jumping up and down. The hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. The crowd are going the mad. The midget's mad loving it. Can't believe his luck. Although we think you think he probably knows. Is dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying hi, hi, hi. He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline, goes really high, but goes off at a funny angle. Oh, hypotenuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies out. <laughs> <laughs> hypotenuse! <laughs> sure. Flies off at a funny angle. Ooh, dear. Hippos there, swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> It's not rubbish, though. I but mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a, uh, a circus with a midget and a hippo, eh? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on going, come on. The midget flew off at a hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what's I that? have to say though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippopotamus, I was thinking actually the way it happened. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. maybe. I mean, it is it that 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never. It's it's a recipe for disaster. It's Everyone knows that midget trampoline hippopotamus. <laughs> Are you mental? You're asking well, for trouble. Well, you yes. know when he told me it. He said, and the midget. He didn't. He didn't mention the hippopotamus. <laughs> and he said, the midget went on like, and soon he fell off. And the hippo at him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. No, what do hippos do? What can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you, what do you Aren't they like very deadly? They're yeah. huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither claimed. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 no, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't some sort of, where Zippo was eating a midget and it's it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely, I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, it's definitely fact. Yeah, okay, right, truth. okay, good. Uh, well, let's play a record then. So, four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais, uh, with me Stephen Merger. Uh, it's the best of. You've been voting in all week, sending your emails, so here's the clips that you wanted. We, we, me and Carl went out, right? Um, and, uh, with, um, me and Jane, Carl and Johnny and Gigi, wasn't it? Gigi uh, was Is it right? important to win? No. Okay. But we're walking on the street. Carl was there though, and you can back me up on this. Um, we had a curry. We're walking back, and uh, this little funny homeless fella, didn't he? Mm. He. Uh, oh, I got to tell it before before I go, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he came up to me, right, and he recognised me, um, and he came up to me and he went, he went, oh, he said, I've just nicked five of your DVDs from HMV, <laughs> and he shook my hand. He was so happy with it, and I went, right, excellent. He went, all I do is I just swing the bag over the top. Like that <laughs> when, when I'm going out, and he had a bag full of DVDs, didn't he? And what? he was he was so pleased to tell me that he'd stolen <laughs> that great. So he said they're going like hotcakes. <laughs> yeah, he said they're going like of they are. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. them. I know we get paid for them, though, don't we? So we not the stolen ones, don't we? No. What do you mean? Did you sign them for him? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were, you idiot. <laughs> what? So um, he just nicked five. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. He didn't say he was homeless, was he? Well, I, I, he, I don't know, maybe. No. Surely, how would he have seen the show? He just walked past Curry's one, one, one Dixon's. morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's any idea. Seen a trailer for it, thought, oh, interesting. I don't know if he was homeless. I, did, I didn't go into his home sure. life. He shook his hand, though, and... But he's... He made Carl look smart, do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So, uh... Yeah. How does he sell them? Where does he sell them? Does he go to people and go, do you want an office DVD? They're not nicked. <laughs> yeah. Four quid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are they stolen? No. No, 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 no. They've still got the tags on them. Well, yeah. it's like those people who, um, you know, those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car. Yeah. And just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, the guy just pulled up, I said, uh, you said, I was in like, uh, East London, I'm going back to, uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off, he went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no. I, th I thought you'd know the way. You're in a cabbie, aren't you? He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're going to go out just on the, you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't yeah. have either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, well, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. In fact, five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew the way to Camden. I don't really know the way. I thought it was... <laughs> oh, it was let me out. You know, Four yeah, quid. Exactly. <laughs> and that's... I, I can't... I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands, that they just think, it's three in the morning, I'm, I'm at a loose end. Mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Well... Yeah. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Couldn't stand it, but it's, it's good money. He was a prof he wasn't like a chancellor, though. Black what was, Black what was he, what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a, in a weedy bin? That was, uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do like a charity event once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell us the story again. Not, no, I'd about. rather not. Cause Why? Because we, we got a few sort of, uh, complaints about it. Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because... It's because he put a kid in a bin, and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. Yeah, it's, it's, I, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, isn't it? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. He I was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know I was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that, and he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Do you know what I mean? Know. So, what are you meant to do? <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> so, it's... it's <laughs> genius! Give me an example of that, give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, give me an example of like, so, it's, uh, it, you know... I can't, well, I can't because again, that's what I'm saying. I can't tell you the story because yeah. there might be someone out there who met this person might even be listening and think I forgot about that, and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yeah. So I, I prefer to leave it, but I think people know. Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing though? You see, I can't explain. He can't. Don't be silly. I prefer to to leave it honestly. What What, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying my dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. I'm gonna burst! So we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> FM 104.9. Uh, Ricky and I are on holiday. Obviously, it's Christmas time, but Carl is here in the studio. He's pressing buttons. All right, Carl? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do this? You, do you know what, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, ju choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this, or, is the, or this, is the, this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what, how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so it means that, you know, where, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be, we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. Well, we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features, 
and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when, wh when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go yeah, on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, growing up on this estate, and there was a, there was this woman about four houses down, right, who's a bit rough. <laughs> all right? Didn't sound to you. Oh, God, no. Right, but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. She looked like a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try you and make a place look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did they get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Must have gone. you seen all to it. No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of Right? I'm, um, oh, that's great. I did Big out. Jake. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> for it. I, I, I did out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> Where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catelyn, rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Insult. Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door. I can't stop. I can't stop it. <laughs> open the patio door as well. It looks like we got us a runaway. <laughs> what <laughs> do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think he had a horse. Yeah, right. So that's I, why the family didn't have any money. They'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway, yeah, it's so always to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it; it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, okay. And uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What yeah. do you mean? Well, Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record. record, let's play a record and come back to this, because it's always going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track, deeper and deeper, it's yeah, like an on, onion, Carl. isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. Well, I, I come just, from the West Country, I've never just, heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and a, 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 a rediffusion telly and this horse yeah. going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really... I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pot. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the, yeah. the mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's well, relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, you, but, but what I'm trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand what, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be Paul. Does she have any tats? Does she have any tats? I've never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think there was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, no, what happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity. Right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money. And they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well, I don't know. I thought, forget the charity. 
Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making over it. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked my mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden. Planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it. Selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Certainly. Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut- you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, cos I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Cos it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The home, horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, they been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet, <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black like Beauty right? was on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay? Or in like a house with a you know, three piece suite and sure. a telly and that? <laughs> <laughs> telly and that! <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. And an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming off 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't I mean, eat, but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was- was doing all right for yourself. Yeah. You know? it, well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family, it was a bit- what we were talking about, it was about- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right? And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. And Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So, then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family who had a horse in the, in, you know, in the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid. But as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like ten at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. No. Was it called Rover? The Did it catch sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars and that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> And that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. <laughs> but am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. I know could you with me, Steve and Carl. Mm. Carl, why have you got a headache? You got a headache? Just a bit stressful because the moves moves on this uh, this week. Are you on yeah. the Oh, by the way. Uh, the XFM listeners came round to my house and bought the, uh, food on the table. Did they? Were quite they happy normal, with it? Quite normal. They were well happy. Yeah. Couldn't believe the luck with it. Could mean quite normal? What do you mean quite normal? Well, it's always a bit scared, innit, getting- getting people round. I imagine they were scared. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and were they excited to see you? Could they- I mean, they were, you know, could you tell that they were pretty pleased to see you? No, I don't think so, I mean- yeah, well, You're but, Carl Pilkington. Yeah, but I- uh, the- the fellas sort of- I mean, they brought the whole family round, which was a bit odd. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not often they get the chance to, to visit a living freak. Anyway, 
they were nice. They were and nice. you're moving now. Yeah. He said he phoned me up today. You know, it was absolutely tipping it down. <laughs> he had to cycle in. Because right? <laughs> he said, because of the move, he doesn't want to leave his bike around there. Right? And he said, <laughs> Said and uh, Suzanne, oh, I can't say this in case he's listening, can I? He won't know. Will uh, he? He, said, he said Suzanne's hired the oldest removal man in London. <laughs> you should hear him. <laughs> and the thing is, right, we booked him. We booked him because everyone else happened to be booked out, but this fella's free, right? <laughs> so he called up this morning. <laughs> I've never spoke to him, but he was on the phone. He sounded about ninety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thinks that he's gonna have to do all the work. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, <coughs> we, well, it, it seems he only wanted some Werther originals. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Listen, <laughs> it seems to be cheap because it's fifty pound an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but how long is it gonna take him? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so genius. Like, when's the move on then? When's the end? Oh, he's coming right. He came round today to bring some empty boxes, and he was struggling with them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh, it, it actually oh. happens on Wednesday. Oh God! Anyway, I woke up this morning. Yeah, feeling fine. It's not a blues song, and uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, "Forget it. I've made my mind up." And I thought, wow, what is that? And I forget it. it. I've made my yeah, mind. Yeah, I went, Carl, what is it? He went, oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went, well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went, ah, oh. oh, I was just wondering. I was lost thinking last night. He said, supposing you had to have your hands removed. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 and the doctor said, well, you can either. Have them stay like that with stumps, or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? <laughs> and I was bleary eyed, and I went, the stumps. He went, yeah. <laughs> I went, all right. He went, yeah. <laughs> and then and what was his follow up text to that? And then I got the text that was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious. What, what would you do? So he's not doing your hands. Would you have stumps or the feet? Right now, the way uh, when I said he's made his mind up, and I went the stumps. He went, yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but he was too embarrassed to tell me. <laughs> There's a little, little bit of what would you do? Because it's. It, but why night, did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Good How friends away, right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre <laughs> surgery I'll, I'll tell you devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, I um, <laughs> I had some beans on toast, right? <laughs> She was away. It's good already. Right. She was away. She had some beans on toast. She I went it. wild. Yeah. Right. Now I was stood up. I live on like a on a high street, right? So I'm, I'm washing up. I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is I can I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on. I was watching them, and everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see them all watching it. And it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs who was reading a book. And she's always reading a book every night. And it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's, a, there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on. I thought, did you witness a murder while you were doing this? <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body. The way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up. And you do. Yes. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah, You've got five true. little digits, but it's, it's <laughs> just the right amount to do <laughs> what you've got. Yeah. To do what you've got to do, right? <laughs> so... So I'm, I'm washing, I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl! Stop! It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front uh, limb? Just go, we'll just say it's the right amount. It? <laughs> but it is. It one, is. One of course extra it is. would get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it that little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure, or, buy, <laughs> or buying gloves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. uh, imagine like going to the doctors and they're saying, yeah, everything's alright, your art's good and everything, but... <laughs> your art's good? What, your Larry's or... Yeah, 
Your heart, your yeah. heart, you're, you're in good form and whatever. Sure. Yeah, it's good news. You know, I had Giano in earlier. He's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, fast uh, wall, but yeah. you're you're all right. But your hands need to come off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lord, but, that's bad. Like I get a second opinion initially. <laughs> But I bet a good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? I thought, Steve! I, <laughs> that'd be tricky. Really... <laughs> and then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you have to keep putting the feet through there. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still cycle in. Okay. To work. You could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd be was, like, you'd be really yeah. fast. Well, well, that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance, and then I thought, but the only thing is, I probably couldn't pull the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Because of little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you'd run in in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night. Right. That's what I was thinking about. Sure. Did you? Did you? How long did this take? <laughs> Well, how long does it take to wash up? Right. Because I imagine you just being there for, like, all night. <laughs> Probably 25 minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He's always doing it. Last night he was at it for, like, 10 minutes. Just, yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always sat in the bedroom. <laughs> She's going, you, you dance in pants again, I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. All the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing, it's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants, the old woman's sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think she ever Are you sure she's not dead? <laughs> 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 Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it, she's just reading this book. The pages never turn. <laughs> she never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you sure, are you sure the Chinese her girl's going- Her cats are dead around I, her. I, I, I'm going into the next door again, that little yeah. round headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me, the bouncer goes, don't worry love, I'll go and beat that's, him up. But he's true. always getting ready. That's true, that's they, see, they see you staring at and washing up going, I could have feet here, and they get yeah. scared. The old woman's dead! <laughs> oh dear. Carl, can you tell us roughly which neighbourhood you live in, so- so it's, that we know? It's central. Central, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, imagine if that little- d was he a Chinese fellow, did you say? Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if he was listening now, I'd love him to call in and explain these actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, do we have this doctor, this doctor that would go, well, all right, Carl, I've got- you could either leave him the stumps, or I've got every little pair of feet. Why- uh, I, I mean, I t told Jane this, and Jane went, did, is that the only choice? Is he could say could have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any? Have, if you, where do you get the feet from? Where do you get the feet from? Can I have? Can I have? What would you rather have then? Human feet or monkey paws? Well, I mean that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said no, it was an option last night. But don't forget, it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this I'm just saying at the time that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know, it's your head. You can go anywhere. No, no, no. It wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head. You can go anywhere. Y you're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say we'll sort us out some other hands. Fair point. The fair <laughs> record. <laughs> uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Pilkington. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing rock buses now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we've just- Oh, we, we keep that going, then we got- well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I oh, mean, it's, it's just, this is the clues. It's just like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais right. at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're going to get three clues, you've got to get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet, yeah. and it was Atomic, Atomic Kitten, kitten and, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, um, <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and the initials there are DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well phrasing. Trenches, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what were the initials there, Carl? On that person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> 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 
He acts it out, though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly, because his little face and his- his gestures and- That's the second one, the initials being H.V., okay? The top of those curtains are wrecked. All the material's all worn out. Right, H.V. And the final one, um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week, right? I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> what's the, what's the initials? W H for that one. So I was in Texas. I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W H. Incredible. <laughs> I've got it. Is it right. great? It's fantastic. It's festival. Okay, time to join the record. Time to join. Okay. Drew, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS, and of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. Okay, one hundred four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. We're not actually here. Um, it's the best old. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh... Um, what's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know, Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Right? Oh! Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Go! You are... No, I did, I did, it, no, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that, why is that... And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> mm. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what? You, I put in why? <laughs> Just to confuse the computer. <laughs> like the computer go, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, yeah. Uh, Last week, uh, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a conversation for next week. Let's do a phone-in, and it's called Carl Pilkington. Genius or fool? Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> they do, though, don't they? No, who, who that's, that, no, no, that? but it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, uh, you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's, his mum's milk. What are you ta what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just- A title <laughs> for the, the story- No, 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 it's what? just, it's just what would you do? Right. What I do you mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area. Right. What area? In, in America, I think it was. Oh, America a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this. Right. right. Now, listen, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and he's saying, is this right? Should it No, it's not. Around? But what, 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 <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws, I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say, if you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and no, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, all right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> 
um, and he starts having his having his milk. Right? <laughs> you live you live next door. You're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you? Why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius. So and you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and. You do that when you're a baby, and everything's all right, innit? Yeah, yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's breast, right. right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see... <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... So what? Um, <laughs> you, know, the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all. No, yeah, no, that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with burgers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God. You don't see it all. <laughs> so they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think you're giving a lecture it, at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, go on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying, right. you grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having... <laughs> it doesn't look right! So... Right. I don't think were those originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so, think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- he's, I, he's, he, he, he turns my stomach. I know, but don't- Because he's arrogant that. as well, exactly. though. Exactly. That's the problem. Don't, to explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit it's, arrogant. It's, 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 it's his whole thing that you, it's the whole package, so yeah. to speak, that you don't Well, like. there's another thing in this quote, because, uh, it's he's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he's, he tried, apparently, to lose some weight, and, uh, it says, he said, the first month I lost eleven pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Mm. I can't say when, why, or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't it's believe quite, it just sneaked that, up on that me. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just uh, sneaked up on me. Yeah. I, 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 it that. was the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old <laughs> cakes as before. It was exactly the same. Sleep, sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was a family dear. sized KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that the, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah. That's not. You know, and when I was twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah. I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah. Just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, <laughs> eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there <laughs> and you discovered. <laughs> no, but someone sent me dream came um, Sophie here sent me something and she said, I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this. And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing. And it's it's the brand name is Gervais. Oh God, that, that is. Have from you been? They've named the cheese after I you. Think, I think it's a big French company, and this is from the Czech Republic. It's all over Europe, and so it's that would be a dream come true, wouldn't it? If they named the cheese after no, you. No, I think it's. I think it's uh, probably you know ancestors, and so I've cheese is in my blood. Sure, quite it literally, literally is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, another heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, it? it comes out of pores like those play doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jay, I bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't right. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but I, you're, Yeah, I, but I you're not big. Like I mean, no one of the other contestants on that, on the, uh, Fat Club, sorry, oh, Fat Club, is, uh, another one is Jono, Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now, Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono, he's oh. that guy who does, um, he used to be on TV and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so true, and he's a really nice bloke, Jono, but- It's funny, cos he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is, is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. Oh, I love Carl. 
Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I, know yeah, you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not to show off, but a couple of awards dues. Yeah. Um, like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or yeah. suits and ties. Not John O. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts. Hawaiian knee length Bermuda shirt. shorts with just these little. But I saw him again Tiny another feet. time and he had shorts on at yeah. a similar event. And I've seen him since in the street and he's all. I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that. Whether he's just. His no, legs I, are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable and, uh. You know, why do, I mean, to be quite honest, well, why, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So, uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course. Flip flops. You know, but do you think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie and, and the then thing, the shorts And the comfort. shorts underneath, and he would just have to come in, kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant, or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. You know, and you're always trousers, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I am. Yeah, yeah. 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 In yeah, you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Of course I'm wearing trousers. Why would <laughs> I, I wear in trousers? And he just thought, though, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know. The next zone is, I've heard he's going in a grass skirt and a mm. garland around us, and he's yeah. going yeah. to come in limboing. But you you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, didn't you? Just for ease. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? <laughs> they, said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. No. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by, you know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about no, but hang on a minute. What I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So, I bet it's Sorry. hard. Sorry, what do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? Thirty-five. Right? He's got loads of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Yeah, uh, so just, sorry, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> I'm saying how it is, because I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and think, oh, <laughs> one more and I'll do without... Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and well, again? Yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So uh, the thing a is, let him finish his point. So the thing is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more? Yeah. <laughs> That, that sort that Does out. he live with short, his sharp shot? I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so you, you don't actually know if this is <laughs> true or not? No, but, but anyway, right, so this, this drug they've come up with... <laughs> they've tested uh, this on mice, haven't they? They've tested it. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm worried if they haven't tested it on mice. <laughs> Thank else. God for that. They're, it's definitely been tested on mice. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby and he said, right, stop a minute. And then they gave it this drug yeah. that makes you lose weight. Yeah. <gasps> and it, its weight went down, but the only bad si side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems, that seems to be fine then. <laughs> Let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, that's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, Rick should get some of that. Yeah, it's truth, Doc, look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, John, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? That happened to the mice. Mm. Well, what what would you do? do you mean? That's the option. But, like, what do you mean that's the option? So, so, I love the fact that your choice is either be like a fat happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, sorry, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, mate. Let's have a go at the fat people before yeah, we start on me, really. Yeah, no, I didn't. I forgot. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I've got some issues, even body issues. I you know. know. But they, I mean, Rick Waller's grotesque, you know. Yeah, yeah sorry about I'm that. just a little bit weird. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, should we play a song? Well, well I'm just a little bit offended. All right, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Bilmington, not here. Uh, it's the best of. You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. So let's take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's, what's the story? Right, so I did some research. Right. Yeah, let, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off, he was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off. So to show the brain life, can still... Or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death. Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So y you weren't having any of it? Well, no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But, you know, no nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years ago. 
um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that Jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, was I can't remember what it was, and they said, right, <laughs> that was terrible. We're yeah. gonna, uh, we're gonna cut your head off, um, you oh. know, you gotta, you gotta show people that like, you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this, in the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say a couple of years ago? You mean maybe sort of... Was it the old days when the phones weren't days. very good? Ages ago. Yeah. Ages ago, so. So, um, so, so yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that, yeah. when you're watching this. Yeah. Yeah. This was <laughs> literally <laughs> ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Chalmers' History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and even before that, which is young, <laughs> <yeah>. before, <laughs> when it was all mental and different. Sorry, Carl, go on. So he's having his head off and he's, but no, he's resigned to it's, it. It's the day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without the head on it, <laughs> right? <laughs> So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Hoover. So. The jailers? Whoever he was. The jailers with one eye. Yeah. 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 Get up. So he so said, no, well, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So um let's He do didn't a test. draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, he said let us let's, let's let's test this out, you know. Okay. He said, Do us a favour. He said, you know, it's my last day. Um what I want you to do is you're gonna cut my head off, let's put a white line on the floor. Right. And see if you know, because there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count. Do you know what I mean? If it's just, if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place, you can't yeah. really count That's that. not impressive enough. Yeah. So, so they said, let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who said this? He did or they did? I think they started to join in with him and say, well, let's make yeah. this a. You sure. Know. You guess it. Go on. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> they got Norris McWhorter there. <laughs> <laughs> the Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, Let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this. We'll do this tomorrow. He said, "All right, yeah. I'll see you in the morning." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. Night, night. Sleep tight. <laughs> bye, bye. Uh, I love the fact that God knows exactly what was said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order is it yeah. or when he knows exactly what was said. Is what, but he knows <laughs> the interview. All right then. See you in the morning. Mm. <laughs> bye. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not like that. Oh, you joker. Oh, don't let the bed bugs work. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got, I've got used to the idea. So yeah. here's, here's a white line for you. <laughs> used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So, uh, so they go, right, you ready then? And he said, I go on. And he cut his head off and the body walked 32 steps without a head. <laughs> wow. 32 steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the white, it walked along the white line, did yeah, it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps and then started to stumble a bit and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah. But, it you know, it was it. a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do then without an head? Uh, how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps. Mm -hmm. The body could- well don't- Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's the doctor sit on the line. Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have got 32 steps. Right, so, so you don't believe that- doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that for something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect to uh, human <laughs> is is, the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that difference. There's not that much difference in well, something. To, do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well, I'm just saying. So you're making out as if like they're a totally different like species. <laughs> I am. I am making out. I mean, call Rick, me old fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Though? I don't want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now, Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives. 
it lives by its head. Because a lot of it's on, uh, 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 some of them are phototropic, chemotropic, some of them just literally have, uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's, it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is running around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to a man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that. And the body's still going, no, I remember, I think I remember what I was gonna do here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna cool, carefully I'm walk, walk 32 line. steps along this white line. I'm basically just good looking at going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head was in the corner going, left, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> left, you, <laughs> left, oh, he's not, <laughs> Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if if, if anyone listening has uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> behaved, maybe in a hor horrendous car accident, <laughs> where they got up, maybe they they went for a walk, uh, they you know they they, they had a little chat. Oh dear, on. Carl, get in touch. You know, oh, you, Carl, you, know you, you you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> you are Why can cockroaches do that? Why are you ever made them? Get when? Let's play a record. Do, do you know what? When I, when I told him this fact, I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live nine days without its head. Mm. He texted back, "What's the point of that?" Yeah. What's the point? Of They're that? not doing experiments. These cockroaches. <laughs> no, no, it's it's a, a boring last week to have. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and on top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jamais with me, Stephen Merch. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Bilkington. <laughs> Carl's all flustered because there isn't a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions and sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm off to start Steve's song for a lover. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why don't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section, I'll have a look on the, uh, on the CD. We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, you go on. Clip. Go on then, right, okay. We've all had, right. we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, Educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, we though. Like Go on, then. We've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do Educating Ricky. Cry. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on, then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I talked about to you in the week, and he had much better things, like when I told you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest. And for some reason, it made him uh, it, uh, played havoc with his belly, and what? he followed through, and he had to clean up. Shut with, himself. Yeah, using um, using ice and stuff. Why are you telling? Why are you telling me that Brian Blessed? What? Wh in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he was climbing Everest, right? Right. Didn't give it to him. He's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right. It played. What's the know, point of that? You'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's, he's, you know, he's Oh, good. so he's all right. I mean, me doing a boxing match, there's no reason he's rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself... Yeah, he did is, that. ...is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could probably, yeah, it could, it been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, have uh, probably cleared out by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> it, it slip on it. I can't really bother just telling you this one, cos- Come on! To just do it, or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means. Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, talk. Right, right listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance. is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people- <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> 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 we'll be the judge of that. The, the, thing, <laughs> the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even be bothered. Yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. No, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> what was all that for? Fight. And blind <laughs> blessed shitting himself. What are you? What? No, tell you. <laughs> no, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear. Then just I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this back, Carl. Or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. I'm trying to know. Not that people years ago. When people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, 
with Gal Gadot, I really don't like him. And so, and so you never forget the time. Because he being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, that, so the, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's... You, so they, they sell the rope. They sell the rope, and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all I have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing it go. <laughs> I'm not so convinced, right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight. We haven't even got time for the last talk. We've got an ad break, and we've got to get out. Okay, give this. the answers, then. This is right. ridiculous. So, come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well-nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> it's brilliant! <laughs> Alright, good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV, that's yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying that I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, and what is it? Uh, someone says, oh, them curtains went, alright. Oh, she said, you know the thing around the top of the um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance, and he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, Wet Knee Houston. Right? Wet Knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume. And, uh, they're going to those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got, uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you lied with no, someone else? it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, what did he say? He said, I, I climbed Everest and the, I played off it with me belly, uh, Let's talk about it next week. We've really run out now. Oh, you're a fool. <laughs> Doves. Caught by the river on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington doing the button stuff. Actually becoming a little bit of a producer. Carl, oh, yeah. He's working, hasn't he? He's come up with a few games and, um, we made him... He's getting a bit stressed when we shout at him because the mics don't work or it's hanging off. It was too hot in here. He couldn't get the, uh, thing working last week. I mean, I, I, I really would throw this studio away and get a real one. Yeah. Well, I'd get one of those ones you can buy for, uh, for like tenner from Argos. Argos, yeah, like Bon Tempe. You, my <laughs> first studio. My, yeah, my first, uh, the little picture studio. of Carl on it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great, great pro product placement. What have you got this week for us, Carl? Because again, we put very, we, we, I, I said I would put, I'm not hung over, but I've put nothing into Rick, it. Rick, have you then. done any work for this week's show? No, no. None whatsoever? No, 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 no. Okay, Carl, what have you got? What have you got? Quick. Keep them, they're, they're, it's five past, they're turning over already, they're finding other things. Oh, melon, with there's right. Melon Sue, there's well, everything. Well, go on. We've got, um, after the success of last week, uh, Rockbusters. Okay. We're doing that again. <laughs> Sorry, uh, were you on the same show as us? <laughs> I thought it went all right last week. Yeah. Yeah, okay. good. Right, so we'll be doing that. Got some nice prizes, which, uh, Oh, what prize? What well, arbitrary films have you got? Have you got, have well, you got don't, 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 oh, no, don't tell them yet. Don't no, tell them. I'll tell you what, if it's Children of the Corn 2, then oh. can I, can I enter this competition? There you go. Come no, on, no, no. What is that? He's got oh. some, uh, different prizes. I, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should just tease the audience with those a bit later, Rick, because okay, there's yeah. some exciting stuff there. It's gonna be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Right, so I, I don't want to give, any... give too much away, Rick, but one of them is a copy of The Office on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> is anything, uh, like, maybe Burt Reynolds' uh, straight-to-video film? <laughs> Are there any of those in Sadly, there? Sadly, nothing quite as classy. Fist. Yeah. Right? Oh, so we've got, we've got that lot to give away. Yeah. We've yeah. got, um, go on. Educating, quick, quick. A, educating Ricky, where yeah, teachers what, what you teach, Cause you taught me that people used to eat tomatoes off lead plates in the land of Narnia last week, which was good. Yeah. No, what it's was only tomatoes they after lead plates, by the way. Why do why didn't they think other fruits and vegetables were poisonous? Be no, it wasn't. It was because tomatoes had acid in them. That was the problem. You see, you don't, don't, don't listen. listen, right? Well, lots of fruits have acid in them. Yeah, but they didn't eat them back then. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have <laughs> bloody kiwi fruit and stuff. Don't say then. bloody. You're a producer. Come on, you'll start, us start saying uh, shit and cock and stuff, you start saying bloody. Tits. Play, uh, play the... Hang on, right, and... Go on, play keep, the keep him hooked, right? Yeah. We've still got, a uh, Song with a Story in it. Yeah. He don't want to play Babushka, do you? He doesn't like the idea of Babushka. I told him that was a story. Yeah. And, uh, he doesn't like it. Uh, a devil went down to Georgia, someone uh -huh. sent in. You know, he's looking for a soul to steal. Yeah. Doesn't like it. Won't you like that? Do you know the song? Not particularly. Right, it's a, it's a song about a lad who goes into a pub <laughs> on a, no a normal night, 
Um, <laughs> it's, it's in, uh, sort of the deep south of America, yeah. New Orleans, somewhere like that. It's, yeah. you know, it, it's not the old Kent Road. Right, okay. Okay, go on. goes into a pub, there's yeah. a devil in there, oh. he's getting a bit cocky, he's had a bit to drink and he's saying, do you wanna, uh, sort of gamble your soul away with me and we'll see who's best at playing the violin. Yeah. And, uh, I think the lad wins in the end, but it, it's not real enough. Whereas the one- oh. What, what, not like the shadow that got a fed up and started pushing kids off bikes? Rick, I think you're in referring Boston. To, to stuff that no one made sense of yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think well, we should okay, refer to okay, last let's, week. Let's, let's play Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? And then we come back and we'll talk about that. Uh, and <laughs> I've come to the conclusion, Rick, we should never refer to stuff Carl said in the past because it would just take too long to explain. <laughs> okay, alright, that's fair enough. Right. Mock Turtles. Can you dig it? <laughs> Indeed. What I've done there is I've taken the title and I've done it like I'm talking to someone. Sure. Uh, sure. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello and there. Carl Pilkington. So, Carl, how excited are you about, uh, Ricky's celebrity boxing match? Are you <laughs> gonna be there? <laughs> are you gonna come along? Are you aware of this? You're aware of all this, aren't you? Yeah, I've heard about we it. We can't, we can't name the opponent, um, oh, cause that is. should be a surprise. Oh. Be, but anyway, it's, it's for, it's for a charity, is it? It's a yeah, charity, uh, yeah. boxing match. Yeah. And, uh. Um, I always wanted to beat someone up for charity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good cause. But, uh, yeah. the thing about Ricky is, I, I mean, I, just, I don't know if you're aware of this, Carl, but, Ricky's one of these men who, who, you know, he doesn't mind sort of, you know, making a fool of himself on the telly and being funny and stuff, but if people said to him, right, you can either be Britain's funniest man, universally agreed that you're the funniest man in Britain, or you could, like, beat some gangsters up in a pub, he would go that, oh, please, just let me beat people up in a pub, and like, and like, maybe like, maybe like an old man's being hassled, like, by some street youths, <laughs> and you come in and like, smash some <laughs> bottles over their heads and sort of okay, sort it out. Against the odds, though. Against the against odds, the yeah, odds, there's sure, about five sure, of them sure, against sure, you. Sure, sure, so, sure, sure. Cause he's got this kind Get of- Get to the point, come on. Well, the point is, you quite likes the idea of being sort of macho, and you know what I mean, and kind of a tough guy, you know, cause he grew no, up in a, in a rough- like boxing. Hood. Yeah, but you'd love the idea of people going, don't mess oh, with Ricky Gervais. Uh, if I someone said, don't mess with Ricky Gervais, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Never mess with Ricky Gervais, he will destroy you. <laughs> That's what you'd love. <laughs> <laughs> and, go on. Because you used to do karate, didn't you? You were a karate. Oh, I used to go, yeah, yeah. You, and yeah. you got, didn't you get all the way up to white belt? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was one away from black, and then I stopped because oh, that's right. what I started working. Oh nights. yeah, one, See? one step away from black. I was it? Really? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, I was chatting to him last night in the pub because uh, obviously the boxing match is in about five weeks' time, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And well, um, uh, anyway, <laughs> he uh, was sat there, Carl. I don't know if you know this about Ricky, but uh, he's taken to smoking cigars. <laughs> no, I do. Are I'm you aware of this? I had the occasional one. He got a cigar. He got like a Monte Cristo out <laughs> of his pocket. It was ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like George Papard. <laughs> for the A team, it was <laughs> pathetic, and he was drinking Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to him, "But aren't you doing a boxing match soon?" Hmm. And um, I haven't started training yet. I'm starting training next week. You're not concerned that it's going to uh, going to have an impact? Well, I, I mean, mean, what I'm saying is, you know, like the, the boxers, they, you know, they normally put in some effort and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like years of training. Yeah, I mean, what you know, what getting I mean? up at five thirty. Yeah, yeah. Because you, as you reminded me of um, of Frank Bruno. When he was preparing for Panto, <laughs> not when he. Was I don't think he even again. smoked then, did no. he? And drank. No. So I don't. Uh, what's your thinking, Rick? Because I'm, because I'm, cause you know you're going to get your face pummeled. You know that. I mean, you're going to. They're going to destroy you. You haven't got a chance. That's why I left it this long. So I definitely lost my looks. But you haven't got a chance. You're having a laugh. Have you ever been taken? Have you ever you're taken a punch to the face? Is this, is, sorry, sorry. Listen, sorry. But I'm genuinely is, concerned. Is this is this sort of psychological training? Because no, it's not psychological training. It's a warning. <laughs> I'm talking to your <laughs> friends and your loved ones, and they all agree we've got a petition going. <laughs> We're sending it to the BBC. Please do not let this man box. <laughs> Anyone nah. else, please. But you're nah. just, they're gonna beat you. Uh, seriously, are you, I mean, have you ever had a punt, like a boxing glove in the face? No. I think you should let us punch you next week live on the show. You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, because I just, well, because you've got to get used to it. Because I think you're gonna either, um, cry, <laughs> just start crying in uncontrollably, or just run away. You'll just run away. You'll just climb out the <laughs> ring and run off. Yeah, this is the same tactic that Ali used to get yeah. Foreman in Rumble exactly. in the Jungle. But I just- Oh, like, dear. Because I think a boxing glove, because I know you're wearing like huge, aren't you wearing like huge kind of foam boxing No, we're not, no, I thought, no, we're not. We're using, um, uh, not a normal, um, uh, amateur ones. Are you wearing, are, are you wearing boxing gloves like those ones they used to have on Gladiators? <laughs> and everyone bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> Those big foam gloves. Yeah. You neck, just slap each other in the face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a big sumo suit. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I should be okay. Do you get to, uh, you get some kind of head protection, do you? Do you yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's amateur. It's amateur. So it's, it's, it's amateur, you say? No, I mean- So it's, it's not the no, title. No, 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 I mean, um, I think that amateur is head guards, vest and, um, 
16 ounce gloves or something, as right. opposed to professional, which is no vest, bare chested. Oh, right. maybe I can ask to fight bare chested because I'd quite like to show off my yeah. body. Yeah, if I, if I could. I think wrestling is really good <laughs> for you. I think, but I don't mean like those kind of like The Rock and people like that. I'm talking about Big Daddy, Giant <laughs> yeah, Hicks, that yeah. kind of. That would be good. Where you can just throw where, yourself where, on someone where they can sort of like be nearly dying, but then they can do a stomach butt. Yeah, exactly. well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stomach to stomach. That's a good move, isn't it? In <laughs> British wrestling, I always like that one. <laughs> yeah, and I oh, think wrestling. Like, like two elephant seals fighting yeah. over a female. Is it true that you've spent, knowing you, you've spent more time deciding what tune you're going to enter the ring to? I want to come out to California by Tupac and Dr. Gray. I think that'd be really I good. I think that's it? embarrassing. And I'm going to come out with loads of, um, little midgets to make me look really big. Sure, sure. I mean, I don't know what the BBC think of that, but yeah. it might be a... I don't know. I, 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 maybe we should take some suggestions as to songs that would be perhaps more appropriate. Okay. Um, I get knocked down, but I get up again. A fatty <laughs> bum bum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Play a record, Carl. It is gonna be- He's dissed me. It's gonna be He's dissed me. Next yeah. week, take a f- you take a punch of the jaw next week. <laughs> on air. <laughs> <laughs> Cheering breaks, long distance, on XFM. 104.9. Mm -hmm. On the way in, mm -hmm. right, you know those little cars? They look like a little bubble car. They're modern ones. They look like half a car. The is, that, th is that like a smart car? Is that yeah. What called? They, is look that like, uh, they just look like a, uh, like, like a toy car and you can mm. park them sideways. There's only, is there only room for two people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just like the half of the front of a Volkswagen just cut in half, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, um, I saw one going on Oxford Street and it's a police car. <laughs> a real police car, right? Really? Yeah. And, I mean, I thought, well, what happens if they have to chase someone? They couldn't, but I don't think that's the point. Because it was written on the side, it said something like, cleaner, something uh, more efficient. So I think they're making the point that we're cruising round in this car like we're on the beat and yeah. it's using less energy and stuff. Yeah. But the first thing I thought of, right, was that those two policemen, they must have been going, oh, dust Sarge, don't let us have that one. Can't we have the Granada? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, so embarrassing. It's I know, embarrassing. About, you know, police, they're, you know, they're doing, you know, yeah. But you've got to respect them. Yeah, you've of got course. Street yeah. toughs have got but to re respect exactly. them. Exactly. I just don't know if you have the, to. Well, get the only thing more embarrassing. What if you're really tall and you have to climb out of one and you're a yeah. copper? Are, th are there any policemen out there who have been uh, asked to drive one of these cars? If you're listening, do you think police listen to this? The only thing that would be more embarrassing is if you had to patrol on one of those bikes the goodies used to ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I think that would be <laughs> more pathetic. A pogo stick? Yeah. It's yeah. so embarrassing. Or on roller skates. Yeah. But not like roller blades. Roller yeah. skates, those really old roller skates. Have you seen that you those- tie, That you tie on your socks. Yeah, have you seen those little bikes that look like clown bikes that the couriers use now? They're about a foot high. They're little- I saw one the other day on it. I, my head turned, yeah. They're but really ju bizarre. Just think yeah, they're that- They're the ones that they, they fold up. Yeah. But think of policemen chasing <laughs> yeah. you on that. Well, I always remember that even in America when I started seeing policemen riding bikes. It didn't seem to me, it seems- Oh, they're quite cool. They're the ones that go through mm. Central Park on the yeah, mountain bikes. Know, yeah, but they're, that's it. really cool, isn't it? They, you know, they, they- It looks like they should be they delivering newspapers. They whiz along at about 30 <laughs> miles an hour and they can just- <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Because like, on motorbikes, on a Harley Davidson or whatever, I'm not messing with a cop. A chips, I mean chips. Now that's cool, yeah. coppers. Yeah, yeah, But people in a smart car or a, you know, know. that's- it is a bit embarrassing. But I suppose it is that or it's better than- Walking, you see. Next, we'll see them in those. Um, if you really want to be uh, kind of worried about the environment, though, you know those uh, little taxis you see that people pedal. <laughs> they pedal around Soho. In yeah, and when it's a, like a, a, a riot squad, there's four in the back. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? If if they need to arrest someone, yeah. Here we go. Go on. No, well, what do they do? Because they do only sit two. So do they have to flag a cab down or something for the it's for the criminal? Point. We'll give what you the you money. Do? Get a receipt. <laughs> take you definitely will go there. Yeah. yeah. You definitely will because we've been caught this way before. <laughs> exactly. The no, last bloke, he just ran off. <laughs> no, I won't run off. Okay. okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, uh, Mr. Policeman, I'll take your car. Then I'll. Okay, go on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely yeah. bring it back though. I will. I will. <laughs> well, you, there, uh, isn't there something in America where when they arrest someone in America, they don't take them back to the station and fill out all the forms? They just take them back to the station and then they go and fill the forms out in a like a cafe or something, so they're still looking out. Yeah. Yeah, Carl told me that. They're what? So yeah. they're still on patrol, is it? Yeah, they? so they said they're doing all their paperwork, but they're in the, f you know, a, a cafe window and they're looking out. Do you know, like how they say in this country so much police time's wasted by having to go back to the office and filling out loads of forms? That sounds like some policeman going, yeah, I could get 
a lot more work done. <laughs> yeah, if, if I was, I was in, the in a pub. Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of criminals in the pub, and, uh, <laughs> if I would, yeah. you know, yeah. and I get to keep the receipts. Yeah, I mean, what well, safest is if I didn't wear my uniform and yeah. probably got drunk. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah. with some mates. Or, a lot, a lot happens in, you know, looking out my bedroom window, so if I was just like, <laughs> snoozing, <laughs> yeah, I was exactly. snoozing, and when I heard a noise, I just pop, oh, look out, <laughs> oi, yeah. come here, come here. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of crime, <laughs> uh, in Marbella over the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> pay me so to if there's a policeman listening who has to drive one of those cars, were you annoyed when your sergeant It is went the most embarrassing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I think the pogo stick. Pogo stick, well, not oh, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the pogo stick. Bike. The, the, the triple tandem. That's the triple great. Tandem. We should get that. <laughs> we should when, get one of the When we do our road show. <laughs> Carl does all the pedalling. Yeah. I'm in the basket in the front. Hello, like Western <laughs> Superman! <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Carl. What have you got? <laughs> what do you want? But, um, Mark the Hoople? Oh, Mark the Hoople, yeah. Dug it out of the library. Yeah. It had one, it had one, it had greatest hits, which was enough, wasn't it? What's yeah. you got for us, Rick? Roll away the stone, aren't okay. <laughs> Coldplay. The Scientist. Have you seen the video for that? No, but- Absolutely magnificent. Is it? It's brilliant. I was always walking backwards yeah. in the woods. Oh yes, I have, yeah. Absolutely yeah. extraordinary. Well I, I like all well their done videos. To I think they're great. Yeah. I still haven't worked out how they do that one with the- whether it's a filter they just turn up the light, cause it gets light through oh, the duration of the video. Oh, walking along, yeah. Yeah. Impressive, yeah. And it's slow as well, so he must have- no, I'd like them to win an down. award. I'd like them to win awards. I like yeah. Coldplay. Yeah, no, good um, one. Rick, uh, can I just- sorry, I don't mean to abuse our position again, but- Bruce Springsteen's performing in London tomorrow night, yeah. and you remember I made an appeal to try and get a free ticket. Yeah. Well, I don't even mind paying. I don't, I, I tried to pay, but that's um, good of you. No, I'm, oh, I'm a generous kind no, of No, and I thought you were mean. No, go on. What are you going to say? But you were all I'm saying is, I, I, you know, what, face value. I mean, you don't want to be ripped off, do you? No, don't be crazy. You know, yeah. ideally half price. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been chasing kind of my tail, really. I just, I'm. I'm not going at the moment. I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him. Man, I mean, he's you know he's going to do a great concert. It's mm. his only one in in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up. Apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I, I've asked Carl. He's done nothing. He's done nothing. No, 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 no Carl, Carl had a very good point. Nothing. Carl, say what you said when he was whinging in no, the but first of all, whilst you're moaning, you also asked in the week for a badly drawn boy album. Yeah, you got in today. Yeah. There's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's yin and yang. And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I do, you know, Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the BAFTAs. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, I'm going to stitch you up now, Carl, and it's in a nice way. And don't worry, it won't be too bad. He won't take too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um. No, no. Oh, don't. what is this? Um. I right. Okay. Okay. You know I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, you're like this, Bruce. This is funny because me and Steve, uh, me and him have been like sending uh, trivia back and forth to each other, which is another point, right? I sent him. Oh well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with um. Right, well, while I'm you're fiddling, if you can make my dream come true uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah, number. Yeah, but like I said, Steve. What? Right? It's, it's n wouldn't be- right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. We work in radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, mm. but think of the- yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say- I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough. I put the enough. hours in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking <laughs> about? I put the hours in. No. Right. So another <laughs> 400 people turn up at the gig. They cram them all in. There's people being crushed. You know, they've paid the money early. They were up early that day when the when the phone lines were open, whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated, and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. <laughs> what? Would you Why mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind. I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but I the, don't mind. But everyone will say that then, and then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything. No, you're Carl's on the right stage. on this one. Right, right, read, read, right, I'm going to give you this. Here. I'm now handing over my mobile phone, Steve, to read the. You can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down. Just read it out loud. Is this a text message from? Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl. You would need eyes the size of grapefruits if only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. I, Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> 
What, what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind my back. <laughs> it's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you've failed to get me tickets and make a <laughs> dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem, mm. when in actual fact it's a Carl Pilkington problem. Do that, do that, I've got it in a I bit. can't, I'm devastated, I'm devastated, you I know, know I, I didn't, and then, I didn't felt, let's play a record. I just, I'm upset. I should have eaten this banana. Off What's the number? It's, uh, 08700 800 1234, but if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. A bit of a classic, eh? R.E.M. I bet if Ricky wanted to go, it'd be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can going. come. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want some tickets, so. yeah. <laughs> You two. Electrical Storm. That's great. That's great, I love that. I'm XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, I want you to tell Steve what you told me in the week. <sighs> about right. the snake, about the anaconda, how to... Right, this is Carl's method. He's not scared of the anaconda, the 30 foot long, biggest, scariest snake. No, you were talking the about stuff, weren't you, about in jungles and that, and animals. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I remember reading hmm. about... Say if you're in the jungle and uh, and you get tired and you go to sleep, right? And you and you sort of wake up and you feel something on your leg and you look down and it's an anaconda, right? Yes. And it's uh, it's swallowing your feet because they apparently they always go f from the feet up. Uh -huh. They never they never eat you from the head. So um, okay. Um, I, 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 should I should I save these points to the end? Cause make that's a, make a list of the points. Because they, they always eat head first. Because the way the fur goes, where they, they have to take a capybara or even a rat, they, they take it from the head but, but first. Make, make, it, make, a, make a point. Okay, make, 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 make some notes. Okay, so we'll come back. Okay, to next. Later. Go on. So they always eat from the feet. Go on. So, so they swallow in your feet, and <laughs> it's said on on the on the website, if you wake up and you see this anaconda doing that sort of eating away at your feet, don't panic. Um, don't and panic. I'm don't just writing this down. Don't okay. panic. Well done. Okay, go on. Don't, uh, don't try and kick it off. Okay. Just let it sort of swallow you. Mm hmm But only up to your knees. Okay. okay. Why, right. why not kick it off straight away? Cause it, uh... I think it sort of gets a bit angry and starts thrashing about and it, oh. it can swallow faster, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. guessing that bit. Okay. Uh, just put a question mark by that okay, there. Okay, pop a question mark next so, uh, to yeah. eat so knees. Yeah, so it's up, eat it, knees. So it's, eat it up to your knees. It's, it's up to your knees. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, what yeah. you do is you get a knife. Yeah. Okay. And you cut. Oh, and how do you get a knife? Do you, do you, do you walk over to the kitchen? I was going to pop over, get knife. Where's <laughs> that coming from? Get well, you, knife. You always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife, of course you do. <laughs> Otherwise you're a fool. Always have a knife, okay? okay. Well, eat, uh, come on. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to go into a jungle. Always have a knife, okay. Always have a knife, yeah. Simple. Um, can I just say something? You know, suppose you've got, you're wearing combat trousers and the knife is actually in the, the, you know, those, the trousers by the knee, the sort of pocket by the knee. What happens then? You could, I suppose you could still reach in, <laughs> into the mouth, couldn't you? So anyway, you've got a knife. Let's well, say you've got a knife. Let's say you've fallen asleep, the anaconda's it's chewing your feet, you let it eat up to the knees, you've got a knife, what do you do then, Carl? Right. So it's up to your knees and what you do, you get your knife that you got out of your pocket earlier, um, and you cut it at the mouth, right? Do you know, like, either side of the lips? Right. So you're sort of cutting it in half. Right, like a Chelsea smile. And it can't- yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It can't do anything, uh, it wasn't ready for that. It can't move about because it's got, like, your legs in its mouth. Uh-huh. Um, and peel it off and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my- my main point, really, is this, Carl. Never will an anaconda or any constrictor, python, boa constrictor, uh, just start eating a sleeping man. <laughs> he will crush you to death first. <laughs> That's why they're called constrictors. They're not called gobblers, are they? <laughs> or holy swallowers. They're called constrictors. Why would he start eating something? Is that how they take down antelope? Just start chewing their leg? Oh, it's gone off. I'll tell you what, lads. They get together, the snakes got together and said, I'll tell you what, we're losing a lot of prey by just living at their ankles. They're running away. Let's crush them to death first so they can't move. Then we can swallow them. You're a fool. So anyway, right, so uh, I was telling him this bit of information because we started a feature last week. Mm -hmm. Well, week before. So Sorry, Carl, first. can we just go back to the crushing you to death first? Yeah, but, well, I read it. He's won, he's won there. He's beating <laughs> you there, Rick. Okay. Did I'm it say what to do if it starts with you? Sorry, do you know no, 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 no. Did it say what to do if, so supposing it, 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 it had this meeting, it had this meeting, 
and it, it started crushing you and you woke up and it was actually round your chest. And every time you <gasps> try to take a breath and breathe that a little bit, it just tightened its grip because it can feel that. What what what'd you do then? You uh you sort of tighten yourself up anyway, because oh. I've read about that. Yeah. If on. one does start wrapping around you, you sort of make yourself into a ball, first of all. And it'll wrap around you, but it's all right because you're pre protecting your lungs so it can't crush you. And then you just sort of shout for help. And right. you and you, oh, you, you shout shout help with this thirty foot snake. Got it. Do, do, do you know how it works? It gets as tight as it can. It can feel as tight, actually as tight as it can, right? With these huge, huge muscles, yeah. right? Yep. Right. When you <gasps> leave a bit of breath out, it tightens do again. Don't. You won't be that out of breath. You haven't been running anywhere, so you can just go. What? And and, and when do you get the, the new mouthful of oxygen? Just just breathe very slowly, like you do. How? Do you know what breathing is? Do you know what breathing is? <laughs> it's extending your rib cage, right, intercostal muscles between the ribs, contract like that, okay, making the rib cage expand, which pulls air in through. It's like a bellow. That you can't just breathe by via the mind. It's a physical process. It's your rib cage. <gasps> well, maybe, maybe I'm special, but I can do little breaths without my rib cage. Play a record, Steve. <laughs> You're special. Play a record. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You, you can't take little breaths well, without moving your rib cage. Can I just give you the titles because we're running out of time, we've got a competition to do. Okay, well, right. let's just leave the anaconda so discussion. That, because, Why uh, don't you agree to disagree and we'll <laughs> see who survives if, if you crash <laughs> land in the jungle. <laughs> right. So, right. Uh, What is this? What are you doing now? This is educating Ricky. Right? Oh, good. I'm gonna look excellent. forward to this. Yeah, Three Ricky. topics that I teach you every week. Yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, I should just remind people, you normally summarise each of these in a kind of bullet point heading, which you tease us with, so yeah. what have you, uh, reduced them to this week? Right, we've got, um, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Stocking, <laughs> Aitken and Waterman. Good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> we've also got, uh, what else is it? It's not his, his vault. Yeah? It's not what? It's not his vault. Okay. Yeah. And we've also got get a lobe of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah. Carl, they're genius. <laughs> Rick will be choosing one of these after new order. <laughs> Oh, Foo Fighters and All My Life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamaica with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. <laughs> so, um, just before we do educating, uh, Ricky, this is where Carl thinks he can give me something of interest and teach me something to take away. Last week I found out that, uh, somewhere in a strange land people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate them with lead. Um, things like that. Um, what was the other one you told me? Uh... Was it last week? Uh, so bit of worms, cut yeah. me off. Yeah. Oh, I, I uh, sent him a text message. I was on the train, a bit bored, and uh, I read in I think it was Metro. Scientists have found out that um, uh, worms get stressed, and they found out that uh, the fat ones um, didn't live as long. And when they checked the thin ones that lived longer, they found out they had a gene for de-stressing them. Right, Carl? What did you remember? What you said? No. He went, well that's stupid, isn't it? He said, did these uh, other ones die of natural causes? <laughs> I went, yeah, he went, alright. Because it could be that the fat ones couldn't get off the pavement quick enough and got squashed. <laughs> so maybe the scientists go, yeah, we didn't- <laughs> Yeah, they used to come to think of it, they were flat as well as fat. I yeah, think the reason that the, uh, worms are getting stressed is because uh, people like Carl are cutting them in half to try and make two snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two worms. Well, yeah. Well. That's the concern. <laughs> he <laughs> said, he said they can't even commit suicide if they're stressed by cutting <laughs> their throat. <laughs> <laughs> I also sent, um, what I thought was quite interesting that the science have found that, um, the elephant hasn't got the best memory. The sea lion has, uh, right. based on, uh, they've, they've got a sea lion and they, uh, got it back into the old, uh, laboratory. Ten years after it, it taught it a simple trick and it could still do the trick. What did you say to that, Carl? I'd say they don't go up to much anyway, <laughs> so if you do teach you something, it is gonna remember it. Sure. Cause it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. yeah. And then it also, I mean I like sea lions, they look nice and everything, but what do they do? What was <laughs> that? <laughs> sea lions? Yeah, what, what are they here for? It's another jellyfish so as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, it's there and people know about them, but what do they do? Mm. Yeah. What does what do we do? do? What do we do, Carl? Well, what do we do? A cat, a cat, first, Steve said, is good for your heart, so you-, you Why is it all geared to what's good for us? Well. <laughs> anyway. Educating Ricky. Ricky. Uh, Good, we settled that then. Go on. <laughs> the titles that are, yeah. uh, meant to sort of pull you in. Yeah. We've got, if, uh, what, what, what was it? So, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Yeah. You've got, it's not his vault. 
<laughs> and, uh, get a load of this. <laughs> get a load of this. So, uh, which pun do I pick first? Um, I think I'll go for, uh, get a load of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah, get yeah. a lobe of this, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a story about a girl who, uh, <laughs> she was deaf, right, for, for four years. And, um, it happened quite a bit back like this. What year? Or about, was it? About, well, I think it was in, ages ago, was about, it? About, yeah, quite a bit back. Uh, she was deaf for about four years. Having an argument with her mum, it said, which I didn't quite understand. Because mm. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. But she was having an argument, well, and a man pushed her against the wall, yeah. and she banged her head, and a hearing came back. Okay. Uh, was she wearing a Walkman, and it fell out, and she'd realised, oh, that's There's why. no explanation. There's no explanation? Well, why is that teaching me something right, then? so I knew you'd say this, <laughs> right? So I thought, right, I'll stick something on it. Do you know that bees are deaf? <laughs> no! No, you can't just, no! <laughs> If no. you ask someone something they don't the answer to, they don't tell you something else. Just I'll tell you something else then. I can't answer that, I'll tell you something else. Imagine that, if you asked a teacher. Look, how do birds fly? Wow, if you're gonna do that, tallest building is, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> well, that's that was the equivalent, Carl, of running away. <laughs> <when we asked laughs> yeah, the intellectual equivalent of going, look over there, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen. What do you mean? What she? Okay, so oh. so she her there's hearing. There's no came explanation. Back. There's no explanation, <laughs> or you don't know. Well, there isn't one, is there? Really? It's a bit what? Weird. But the, the doctors, only did thing the doctors not look into it. No, I think they just said, "Oh, that's good." <laughs> But so, so, again, I don't- <laughs> where did this information- is that- if you read this on is the that net, is that it? all they put there on the There was once no. a deaf woman who hit her head and she and could hear. Came back. It was bizarre things about being deaf. Was there three, oh, like- yeah. was there I've three got that book, yeah, it's a good book, that. Was there three yeah. more pages you just couldn't be bothered to read off? Yeah. No, no, it was just a little bit and it Was said, there a little picture, a cartoon picture? No pictures, I just read going, it. ow! Look, ow, if you I don't want to know, if you don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something. It'll be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella, yeah. um, What year? Ages ago? times? In, I'd say in the 70s. Okay. Would you? <laughs> Any evidence for that? And, uh, Does he wear flares in the, uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that it's your reason? No, it's, it's a bit like Yori Geller, this fella, right? Where oh, yeah. he's electric. He's electric. And, um, if he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time. Ugh. And he'd be having a bath and everything would be alright and then the power would sort of switch on in his body and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. <laughs> so. <laughs> what do you mean so? What is that so- what does that so mean? You've given us nothing. You've given us nothing. You'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation. Yeah. Electric eels have 400 volts in them. Oh, is this the running away again? <laughs> what was that one called? Yeah, but they-, they, they but it's, not, a, it's not his vault. But there's a reason <laughs> they-, they, 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 they <laughs> not his vault! <laughs> it's not his vault! I thought it was gonna be something about keeping I think it we should, safe. I think we should do these the other way around. <laughs> I think we should tell vault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Right, let's leave it. Play it. Educating Ricky. Finish. Uh, We're not doing it. No, we are. Oh. <laughs> what? Don't look at me like that. Oh, Carl, what? you're in a bad mood. The oh, Carl, I'm dreaming right. of you. Right, do the last one. Do the last one. Carl's saying we're never doing this again because we don't appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, you don't know how good this feature is, mate. Right, last one. Yeah. Stocking Aitken and Waterman. Go on then, tell me about that one. What's that? What am I gonna learn from this? Right, well, do you know the saying, put a sock in it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. Do you know the saying? Yeah. Right, well, do you know where it comes from? I assume it's shut up, so I'll stuff your mouth with a sock to well, shut you up. years ago. Yeah. Sorry, am I right? Mm, no, not really. Ages ago. 1970s? Uh, 50s, okay. I'd say. Do you know the old, uh, I'd say! Do you know the old gramophone? Yeah. With, the, with the big horn on it. Yep. Yeah. Right, well, those stereos didn't have a volume control on them, right? So they'd be listening oh, to so the put a sock in the and you'd put, mute. And you'd put something like a sock. That's on. a real one, you see. That's taught me something. That's, that's good. That's yeah. excellent, Carl. That is the, that is the only one that counts, like chewing the fat, if they're true. I'm assuming they are. It works. It's of interest. I haven't got it verified yet, but that is educating Ricky. That's brilliant. I will say the other two were more entertaining. 
So, you know, I do don't... You see, do you understand the distinction, though, between that one and Electrical Man? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, <laughs> or <laughs> I've hit me head, I can hear you, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the difference, though? Or... Uh, are not, all, all not three, because I, when I read all three, I took something away from all of them. What, what did you take, take away, away from the Electrical two? Man? I just thought, oh, imagine that, imagine how annoying <laughs> that would be. <laughs> But that's yeah. not education, is it? And it's really? not taking anything no, but, away. Think about it, right? We take our lives for granted all the time, don't you? You get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get up and walk for a shower. Some people can't walk, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, he can't even have a bath. You know what I mean? It's nice to have a bath, isn't it, when you've got time on your hands yeah. and you can relax? This guy can't even do that. He might be alright for a bit, but he's not really enjoying it because at any moment it could strike. Yeah. So, he can't even do that. He can't comb his hair because it keeps going a mess. Yeah. He can't watch <laughs> his Nor can you. No, he can't. <laughs> does he, does he fight crime? What does he do with his powers? <laughs> yeah. I think he just has to sit around because no one, he can't work with machinery. Right. Because it'll probably blow a fuse. Yeah, so he just sits around. Think about it, what can he do? Mm. What normal things can he do? Skateboarding. Going for long walks. Yeah. Put a wetsuit on. Well, he couldn't do that. Why? Ooh, water and electric. No, no, wetsuits aren't actually wet. <laughs> They're dry yeah, initially. Just put a whole wetsuit on and walk round with flippers and A wetsuit's not like a dinner jacket that's like <laughs> really wet. <laughs> well, yeah. all, all I'm saying is think, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, right. and what was the and other the, the, the girl's girl death <laughs> four years hit her head. Yeah. That's just, What uh, have you learned from that? What is that? Well, imagine, imagine how happy you'd be. Remember that time when I, uh, <laughs> I nearly died when I choked on a Mr. Freeze pop? <laughs> Right. No, tell us that one again. No, I told you, didn't I? Tell us again. Yeah, but the people will remember it and then it's- They annoying. weren't, they weren't listening. Go on. What happened? It was ages ago when my mum and dad used to go out shopping on a Friday. 1970s? Get, all, get, all, get the food in. <laughs> get, get a week's load of food in the cupboard and that. And we'd, uh, you know, they'd come in with all the food <laughs> and we'd all be like, oh god, you know, there's no food left on a Thursday really, so we'd all be hungry on the Friday by the time the food got in. Mm. I love that, but they would like, need a, 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 I imagine him like jackal puppies. Yeah. Just like, like, uh, uh, licking your parents' mouth for food as so, they come through the door. So they come in from the supermarket, they're emptying the box. Our kid had got some biscuits and what have you. <laughs> I, I, it's frenzy, uh, just a feeding frenzy, like pigeons. I grabbed the Mr. Freeze pop <laughs> and knocked it back really quick, but it hasn't, it wasn't frozen. So I knocked it back so it was like a liquid and it went down the wrong way, right? Yeah. And I was choking, right? And I nearly died. It, it must have been about, how long can you go before you die? A couple of minutes to do right, it. I reckon about a minute fifty. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was, uh, <laughs> I was really close to dying. <laughs> How do you know you were close to dying? <laughs> me, uh, me, did your life flash before you? No, but I just was like, <laughs> there's loads of incidents of him eating pops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> just was dead forty of those. Whatever, what, right? Anyway. What do you think you'd see <laughs> if your life flashed past you? What do you think? <laughs> which elements would stand out for you? Do you think? <laughs> what? what? Uh, Start now. Go back. Zoom. What do you remember? What's the first thing you remember? As a kid. Yeah. yeah. Just anything right. now. Being in the hall and having our dog licking my face. <laughs> 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 That's your earliest memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you, what's the next one? Oh, yeah. Right, next oh, one's probably what? being at being at primary school with yeah. uh, Lindsay. Yeah, was little, that your girlfriend? Well, a little friend who was a girl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we used to have like tins with with letters in, and you'd have to write stuff. But anyway, what were we doing? <laughs> Right, so anyway. I'm intrigued by the right. dog that was licking your face. Well, bin that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't bin that. Rock no, it's a great feature. I just think you need to be a little bit more careful about what, what you consider oh, to be mics. education. Oh, I'm going funny. Right. I right. fell over. All right, well, right. I'll- We'll work on it next week. Play right. a tune and- What have you oh. got for us? Because we've got a big competition. Come on! We've only got 25. Yeah, well, come on then, quick then! Do something, play a tune. Play a tune. We'll come back with Rockbusters. What are we playing? Let's play a bit of, uh, Tupac. Oh, that's what I'm coming out to, isn't it? Yeah, fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine it. Whack it up. Whack it up. Tupac. California Love. Yeah. And that's the big tune that uh, Ricky will be coming out to when he has his celebrity boxing yeah. match. Yeah. We're all looking forward to that, yeah. Rick. Yeah. 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 Competition time, Carl? Oh, Carl's looking forward to this. He's just getting all stressed about his half hour. Like it, like Pete. Oh, go on. Go no, on, it's sorry. just, uh, we should have done this a lot earlier. Cause Why? Just keep him, it keeps him locked in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, uh, if you haven't heard the game before, I'll give you some initials, bit of a cryptic clue, and those initials and the cryptic clue makes up some band, not might not be an XFM band, but it's a band or a pop group or an artist or something. Yeah. Uh, it's on What's email. the feature called though? What's the feature it's called? called? Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to, uh, will we do this on email? I think we ought to because you don't like taking calls from the public, do you? Well, he can't work the machine. No, <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. right. It's yeah. not that, it's just that, then it's pretty fair for everyone. Anyone who's like got a computer, you mean? So it's open to anyone who's got 
you know, a computer or a laptop at their disposal at this <laughs> precise moment. Anyway, uh, there's some cracking right. prizes, Rick, you'll be pleased to know. That, oh, we see, once again, uh, Carl has, uh, managed to collect together an arbitrary assortment of, it's just uh, looking around, stuff. looking around the office. I, I mean, where did you get these from? Did you just, n did you, wh I mean, seriously, where did you get them from? Because it's right, such what, an arbitrary what, collection. What have we got I don't know what kind of a person would want these items. Right. <laughs> it's on. such an arbitrary selection, I don't know what kind of a person you'd be. Read them out, <laughs> what have we got? Well, uh, there's a, a another, uh, XFM compilation, which obviously you've obviously nicked from somewhere in the office. Yeah, it's a good, good compilation remix to uh, the album. an album here, which is a promo album with two pigs on the front, I think it's the Smashing Punk Friends Live. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be yeah, certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the album, didn't we give this one away last week? This well, is yeah. just a, an arbitrary compilation album, again, one of those kind of, Is uh, that the actual one you didn't send, Carl? No, no. Oh, I've got, got, got a couple I've of got them. I've got a job didn't? lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, oh, surprise, The Office oh. on DVD, right. um, which is ludicrous. <laughs> oh, and I've then... seen it from here. What film? If it, like, listen, listen, uh, dear, dear XFM listener, it's half two. You know, it's just, uh, a bit windy out. You're probably gonna stay in this evening. Maybe do a bit of shopping. You, you got, and then uh, in a stand evening. Oh, what film would you really want? No, I mean seriously. Think if you could see one film, right? What would you want to DVD, see? DVD. What DVD. DVD. Or releases. Or, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's, we'll put them out of their misery. See, they'll be watching this tonight if they're a lucky winner. It's the movie Stigmata. <laughs> Stigmata with <laughs> Patricia Arquette and Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> um, oh, so look forward to that. That's great. That's the big that one. That is brilliant. Oh, for. look at Carl's face. He's actually offended because he puts. He's the only one that puts any work into this show, and he's got st competitions. He's got educating Ricky, Rockbuster. Got he's the, got, got the song with a story. He's got a song with a story to come that he's like trapping. Oh, gone through him. I'm it's unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so you're playing for, uh, that collection of arbitrary goodies, plus the big prize this week, Stigmata, featuring Gabriel Byrne. Oh, oh dear. Uh, about Go a woman who I think, um, starts bleeding from the hands. It's a horror okay. film, I think. You'll have to be, uh, 18 or over I've to take it. part. It's not, it's not terrible. Sure. It's all, all right, but Is it better than, uh, Children of the Corn? <laughs> which was a big giveaway <laughs> last week. I haven't seen Children of the Corn. Go on yeah. then. Right, so, uh, so Next where's... week, Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> Go on. Here's, Go on. Here's the, uh, And Tony Banks's own <laughs> solo <laughs> <Yeah>. album, Banks' <laughs> Statement. <laughs> Tony Banks, remember, is the, uh, uh musician uh, from the Much Love Genesis. But we've got that album to give away. All right, then. So, uh, right. To so win those exclusive prizes. Yeah, yeah, Go on. Yeah, you've got to email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I saw a sellotape dispenser out in the, uh, uh, There's a pair of want. gloves that I don't know who's out, but they're out there and they've been there for a week, so. Let's send them A pair of well. gloves, a sellotape, a sellotape dispenser, uh, and Tony Banks's solo <laughs> album, <laughs> Bank <laughs> Statement. Yeah. Okay, go on. Right, first one. Yeah. Initials JT. Initials right. JT? What's the cryptic clue? Cryptic clue. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Hold on. Yeah? JT, and what's the clue again? At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Full of logs? Yep. Okay. So, uh, who could it be? JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah, go on, right, next second one. one. There's three of them you gotta get. Letter is W. Yeah. Uh, the clue, that lad's got bad asthma. That lad has got I've bad asthma. I've got that asthma. one already. I've got that yeah. one already. W. Yeah. yeah. And okay. finally, the last one is the letter C. Yeah. And, uh, the cryptic clue is um, Carl is one of these. <laughs> Um, Mousetrap is that musical, isn't it? This isn't a clue, by the way. It is called Mousetrap, isn't it? There's not it's a musical. It's not a musical, musical it's a but play. it's a, it's it's a, a right, whodunit right, sort right, of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, <laughs> right, here's a clue. I saw that, uh, <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> Imagine that on the real blockbusters. Yeah, mate. Bob Owen is going, oh, can we stop a minute? Oi, um, you with the nine teddy bears there. <laughs> Mousetrap, that's a show, isn't it, in London, isn't it? I think so, Bob, yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Right, yeah, carry so, on. So, so the camera's back on? Yeah, yeah. So, the letter is C, and the cryptic clue. Uh, I saw that. Mouse trap the other night, uh, but the heating in the in the theatre was what? knackered. What? The heating, the heating in the theatre was knackered, right? Ruined it. Well, we've got that one already as well. Yeah. I mean, these are th th uh, the first ones are hard, but the so, those two so are just a quick reminder. JT was the first one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of, uh, full of logs. Full of logs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second one, W. That lad's got bad asthma. Uh huh. Yeah. And the last one, uh, C. I saw that mouse trap the other night, but the uh, the heating in the theatre was knackered sure. and uh, ruined the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, Ricky <laughs> Gervais at xfm dot no. uk is the email address. You can win. I'm confused. Uh, the various full of logs, treats, actually. including I'm in a stigmata. I'm in a Gabriel river Burn. full of logs. Yeah. I'm in a river full of logs. Well, we'll do it in about twenty minutes. Yeah, you've got to stay tuned for the answers. It's not. It's not the quickest, so don't go rushing and sort of messing it up. Think about it. 
and it's random email anyway, so uh -huh. there's no rush, all right? And uh, if you want to email, um, you're welcome to say, please do not send me the prizes, even if I win. <laughs> welcome to put that on there if you don't want that junk in your house. Right. The reason we're, you know, we usually sort of play a record out of an outbreak, don't we? Yeah. Carl is so concerned with his little competition, he hasn't got a record ready. Sure. Got one, got one, got one, got okay. one. Okay. Sorry, Larry. Yeah. Do you want to do a quick recap, a rec quick recap? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. even just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not, but I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Yeah, go on, Recap, quick. Still send your emails in. Uh, JT, it's some initials of a band, just in case you didn't hear it last week. If I said AK and an exploding pet, that would be Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right? They know so, what a clue is. So, JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah. W, that lad's got bad asthma. And C, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night. The heating wasn't working. It ruined the night. And, uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Some stuff. Stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> With Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton, who's uh, our producer. No, a proper producer now. Producer. No, but he's getting. It, but it's, it's more like it now, isn't it? Before he was someone who pressed the buttons. Then he was someone who pressed the buttons who we just made talk like mm. a. Uh, performing monkey. I hear and he's gonna be lured away by the Today programme on, uh, Radio 4. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they've, and they, they've lost their news editor, I think. Educating <laughs> Ricky, quite topical. Absolutely. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Is well, it? so, when you say topical, what do you this, mean topical? this is, uh, wh topical, well, this happened ages ago. Yeah. Y your words, not mine. Have they got a, a Ricky who works there? We can look into that. Um, so, so this Cole's is the big set of got to be given away, Rick. They've got to be given away. This um, is Rockbuster. We've uh, got, uh, obviously the big prize, Stigmata, this week. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give the prize to, uh, to Ira, I think it's Ira or Ira, but she, she or he, uh, emailed in, uh, the right answers and then said, if you could enclose the receipt for Stigmata, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm amazed by the number of responses we've had. And someone wants a copy of Tony Banks's uh, solo yeah. album, which I was mucking around, so we'd be better buy that in the week to give it away, because I think that would be an amazing prize to give away. If you right, just give the clues again. Do the again. clues give and the clues then just again, give I'll, the answer. I'll tell you Come on. What the answers are. Right, well, the one that everyone was struggling with was the first one. So yeah. I'll save that, so we'll go to the second one. W. Yeah. That lad's got bad asthma. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, what that is it? was Weezer. Yeah. Yep. Good work, well done. Uh, the last one, uh, C. The clue was, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other day. Uh, the heating was knackered in the restaurant. Yeah. In the restaurant? In the, the theatre. Yeah. And uh, it ruined the night. Yeah. yeah. So it was a cold play, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a cold yeah. play. Yeah. And uh, JT, uh, at the moment I'm no, in No, I river. can't think of this one. At the moment I'm in a river full of logs. Well, I had to say there were some wrong answers. I, what was it again? It was Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Uh, we had some wrong answers that included Jethro Tull and James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that relates to it. I'm annoyed at Lake yeah. when he clearly said river. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the first thing that cropped up. Not I'm in <laughs> some water full of logs at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm in some water full of logs. But he actually had to say river, <laughs> so not Lake. That annoys me. I mean, I didn't get it. Fair enough. I should have worked it out. I should have tried to think like you. A lot of people obviously think like you, which is uh -huh. which I'm you know worried about. But yeah. Uh, oh, James Taylor, it's great. <laughs> but that's James just T, someone, James Taylor. Just yeah. guessing. Yeah, James so, Taylor works. Have we got a winner, Steve? He's I, gonna I, randomly I did, pick I, one. I did have a winner. I've just um, I've just lost them. Oh. Needless to say, that lucky person. It won't be watching Stigmata tonight. Uh, just randomly, it's, it's just a random. draw, by the way. It's not the it's first just, one. Okay, I'll just, I'll I, just. I said to Carl in the break. I said, "Is the first one in?" He went, "No." I don't want a competition that relies on speed because I don't want to be rushed. <laughs> Okay, uh... So randomly uh, click on just, someone. I'm just gonna randomly click on one. Go on. Uh... They've not, they've not put an address. Well, what oh. we can do, we can email back and say, send us your address. Well, of course you can. I think if they haven't put an address. Well, no, t t okay, read it out. Okay, alright, alright. Yeah. Chris Beaumont. Yeah, uh, lucky winner. Chris Beaumont as Chris well. Chris Beaumont will be watching Stigmata tonight <laughs> with a club of hagen <laughs> if I'm not much mistaken. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he'll be loving it. Well done to Chris. Need his yeah. address. Right, right then. That's the end of that competition. Right. Can we play a record or something? Well, or... we're on to another feature. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this one is... <laughs> Rick, were you not at the planning meeting? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? 
Come on. This is, uh, that song's got a good story in it. Oh, is this that- oh, God. So tell us the rules. Yeah. Right, the rule is that it's songs that we play on the show every week, and there's a lot of music out that they just keep saying the same oh, thing Oh, just over and what is it? What's the song, the song with the story this with week? A good story. What's the song with the story this week? Just say it. It's Gene Pitney, 24 Hours from Tulsa. Oh, well, I'm really sorry about this. If you're an XFM listener, we gotta listen to this. Go on. Well, do you know what it's about? Yeah, isn't he getting- trying to get back to his girlfriend? Yeah, he's been working away. Um, yeah. lives in Tulsa. He's been, he works quite far away. Right. And he's Would this save us having to listen to the song? Well, it's, it's always good to sort of- Hear the, hear the story before you hear the story. It's <laughs> like, it's like, you sure. know- you, you, I like this before a film. Yeah, no, go on, go you, on. You might, you might read the book before you see the film, type thing. Yeah, so never in my case. <laughs> he's, he's working, he's working miles away. His missus is in, in Tulsa. He's driving back. Yeah. And he can't wait. He's only about 24 hours away, isn't he? I remember. He's, he's about 24 hours away, yeah. and he, uh, is a little bit tired on the way home. He's thinking, oh, I don't want to look a mess for when me missus see, sees me. Mm. So he says, uh, right, I'll, uh, stay at a motel, get some energy and that, you know, for mm. when I, uh, see ya, have a Neutral shave. Rain bar. So he yeah. pulls over at a motel, yeah. and he's locking his car up, getting his suitcase out of the back. There's a woman in the car park. He's <sighs> like, oh, she's all right. She looks at him, he thinks- Sex FM 104.9. I don't think the suitcase in the boot is mentioned in the song. I think that's maybe a 12 inch mix or something, I've not heard that. <laughs> well basically, right? Oh, I don't, I don't remember- I'll the play the record, for Christ's sake, let them listen to it! I don't remember him saying, cool, she looks like right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well done. Yeah. 24 hours from Tulsa, Gene Pitney, song with a story. Hmm. You yeah. are quite upset by the, the lyrics of that song, aren't you? I just think it's a bit annoying that, um, <laughs> right, he, he loved this woman. Yeah. Um, everything's going fine, he's only 24 hours away from home, I don't know how, what sort of distance he's done. But, <laughs> but he can't wait to get home. <laughs> and I wait to talk with some woman in the car park to sort of- <laughs> Give him the eye. <laughs> give her the eye. And every- all the- all the- all the, like, the good times he's had with his missus go out the window. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. That's the dangers of falling in love with a prostitute. <laughs> See, oh, God. What I like about it, I, though, is the fact that he's writing this to his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. It's like, talking about rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah. Like, just kissing her and getting off with her. We were having a wild time. It didn't take as long as Carl did explain it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but did, did you hear the very end? Because yeah. he's a loser, because he said, and he can never go home again. Yeah. yeah. So even though he's got this new girlfriend and that, yeah. and he can't see his old mate. He anymore. has falling in love with can't that, see his mean. old mates anymore, <laughs> he said. He can't see his old mates anymore. Yeah. I'll it's a sobering lesson. I'll tell you, you song, <laughs> next time you stop at the Granada <laughs> services, <laughs> <laughs> on the way back from, you know, Swansea, <laughs> I'll be tell careful. You, there was a song that was a bit like that by Jim Reeves, um, probably at about the same time a little bit before, right? It was just called, um, just a hundred miles from Mary Ann, right? Mm. And, um, it was him and his horse going through the snow, and he right. just turned He stopped at a little chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fancied another donkey. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, it's really sad. It used to make me cry when I was little, cause he got there, right, and he, he wouldn't leave old Ben, the horse, mm. and then they, and he dies in the snow, and then so he dies in the snow. <laughs> he's gone again, he's gone again. <laughs> that, I get the same way teary eyed with, uh, two little boys. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Why not? It's just. You think I'd leave you dying when there's room on this horse for two? Climb up here, Jack, we'll soon be flying back to the rank so blue. It was just like when they were playing with the little horse's head uh, when they were little, and he was a soldier and he helped him, and he returned the favour in a war, which to me is a bigger favour <laughs> than just letting him have a go on a hobby horse, but, uh, mm. a lot, lot, lot braver, if you, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, last number one of the sixties as well. Christmas yeah. 1969. And it's of course based on truth, that. It's actually, that's a history lesson right there. It is based it on is. fact. It's yeah. a famous, famous it person. I think it was Cromwell. Winston Churchill and Cromwell. It's, yeah, it's Winston it's Churchill and Cromwell. Cromwell and Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah, they were both lived ages ago, so they <laughs> lived at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Literally ages ago, so they lived at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's it then. Is it? Yeah. Were you listening to anything we were saying then, Carl? Did Did you understand any of that that me and Steve were just chatting just about then? That Rolf Harris uh, did a good song about right. someone who's got to carry on a horse. Right, and what, what, what was about the stuff about Cromwell and Winston? Oh. Which, what do you think that was about? Oh, I missed that. We we're doing humour, we we're doing a little bit of humour. It was a satire on you saying age is not being specific. Do you, um, did, did, do you like that stuff we do? Yeah. <laughs> That's it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just a cat looking out a window at a dead m mouse or something. It can't, <laughs> you can go, come here! And it's just looking at the mouse it could eat. You, you wanna, you wanna press the buttons and finish, don't you? Yeah. What are you gonna do, play a record or? No, that's it, it's ads and that's it. Okay. Good, right. Goodbye. Well, what a wonderful ending. That was the reason we went out with a bounce. Foo Fighters. All my life on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and of Hello. course, Carl Pilkington. Ooh, 
what we're gonna show for you today? <laughs> I mean, what have we got planned? Oh, what have we got planned? Oh, come on. Oh, loads of stuff and it, two hours of it. Right. And all the records. But specifically, what sort of stuff have you planned for us? Because I know you've been what working have you hard. Done? What have you done? Because I, well, you know, I've been busy this week. I've been yeah. house hunting, I've been uh, various things, but I know you've had the whole week off. Right. So what have you been up to, Mike? Go on, Carl. Carl, tell them what we've got. Tell them what you've. What we've planned, all the stuff you've done. What have you got? But Rick, specifically, what have you come up with? Um, quick, 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 because people I'm, are getting bored. Tell us okay. what you've- I've come up come with, with, um, the music. Right. I've yeah. got, obviously that's- we've already planned that. We planned that last week, so that's all done, but what have you yourself contributed to today's show? I'm looking I got a- to I got a- um, mm -hmm. uh, a text message today from right. Ross Noble, you know, Ross Noble the comedian, mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. on- who's on- oh, I've got news for you. Right. All right. He says, ask Carl if he woke up with ladies' boobs, <laughs> would he just put a dress on and live as a lady? Or will he just be a man but with these boobs? Carl, it's a good question. <sighs> I know, I know that happened to Ross, <laughs> so he's, he's throwing <laughs> that one out. It didn't away because he ate pizzas for a yes, year, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. And he got a lovely pair of breasts. Yeah. Go on. Probably the boobs. Just find a, a loose fitting jumper. Go to the doctor's. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to the doctor? How would you explain this phenomenon to the doctor? So you'd be you'd be happy with this because you believe in um, shite like no, no, you know no, happening. No, no. Go on, but what? it can happen because I told you a couple of weeks ago how it can happen. What? And you can wake up with breasts if you're a fella. I told you. Go on. Haven't you remembered? No, I, I, I funny that, isn't it? Go on. Have you, Steve? No, I, I don't remember this. Did, did you tell us on air? Yeah. Um, it can happen if you go to Argentina and have a steak. <laughs> you can wake up with breasts. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because I'm I sure I'd have remembered Carl, that. Pull the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he likes that. He likes that. Is joke. that what you've come up with, Dave? <laughs> yeah, that joke. Yeah. Brilliant. Play a record. It's going to be a dynamite show. <laughs> song do you want? Oh, oh, oh listen. One. Look, we're going to play. I'm going to play some classic tunes today. I'm going to educate the youngsters, Steve. Uh -huh. Right now, you've all heard of Lou Reed. You've all heard of Velvet Underground. But you know, have you heard of Venus in Furs, Carl? Shiny, shiny, shiny boots of leather. <laughs> Venus in Furs. Velvet Underground. Mm. What a great start. What a classic I mean, song. They, they continue to sound fresh and contemporary. Yeah. Is this, do you know what that song's about, Carl? No. M and S. M and S. It's about M and S. You know that? Yeah. You know the shop? Yeah. It's all about that. Yeah. Whiplash, smile, and all that. All the things you can get at Marks and Spencer's. Shiny boots of leather. Yeah. Being whipped. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a new division they've opened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have got a great show lined up, man. Have we? we? No, go we, on. No, we have. No, no, because we've got, um, uh, Rockbusters coming up, the great Rock, new looking quiz. Looking forward to that. Uh, that. That's, that's made the press. Has it? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, Frimley Tea Rooms uh, newsletter <laughs> mentioned it. Um, we've also got, um, That's Carl's local, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've also got, uh, Educating Ricky, where Carl educates, educates me. Uh, the one last week. A girl, right? She was deaf, and she was had an argument with her mum. And she pushed her, and she hit her head, and then she can hear again. Yeah. Don't know what I learned from that. No. But it might be, it might be subliminal. Someone might be going. It might, it might be a metaphor that I will learn from. Yeah, it's like you know, a parable. Might, yeah, yeah. So uh, look at his face. We, so, might uh, as well, we might as well be talking Dutch, might we, Carl? Say something quick. It's radio. I, I, I don't understand what you want from me. <laughs> oh, we're only joking. Right. So. <laughs> Educating Ricky, I, I've worked a bit harder this week. We've got some good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the the the, the, the teaser headlines the later. Headlines in a bit. Yeah. We so you've got, got you've got Rockbusters. Well. Carl's having a bit of a stressful week because he thinks he's not appreciated because he's he, he's gets in at what time do you get in? About eight or nine, don't you? About well, last week. Yeah, I've been busy this week. I've been in at about half past eight in the morning. Yeah, and been leaving when? About half past eight, nine o'clock at night. <sighs> yeah, you yeah. in Saturday. Yeah, I'm in now. You get paid, don't you? I'm busy at home. At a lot home. of people work late, Carl. A lot of people work 12 hour days. Why are you busy at home, Carl? What are you up to? Because we're trying to sort out a move. Uh huh. I've been trying to call around this morning to get someone to buy a food on, on a table from me. Yes. Um. <laughs> well, we could put that, that appeal out now, couldn't we? If anyone wants to buy a futon or a table. Just what's think, a, what's a, a futon that Carl Pilkington exactly. slept on. How much are you, uh, you asking? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, well, you need for to be the two. You've got, to, you've got to take the two. I don't want, like, different people coming round and that. Sure. <laughs> Wasting you've your time. You've got to buy a futon on a table. It's uh, quite specific, isn't it? Someone <laughs> has to want a futon. Yeah. The, the specific uh, futon you're selling like like made, isn't it? Alarm <laughs> clock and tea maker. This is yeah. futon and table. Um. Looking for about, about 100 quid. And yeah. it's good. It's good condition. The food yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Right. No stains. You haven't pissed no. yourself in the. In, no. No. Right. Nothing. 
And what uh, kind of table, what sort of table is it? are we talking? Are we talking like a table for a lounge, a, a dining table? No, for, for uh, like a computer and uh, just, uh, you know, something. Have you got any drawers? No there no are any drawers? drawers in, there's no drawers. No, it's just a nice wooden table. Right. Uh, is it, is it kind of oak or is it sort of an Ikea sort of thing? No, it's like oakish. It's oakish? Yeah. Okay. So, hundred quid. The food one is just, it was just, just a mattress and the, and the, and the, the, the pallets. Yeah. Just yeah, but it's not. You see, you get cheap food on. So this, this, this is it? a good one. It, it's how much would that have retailed for when I you purchased it? I think I paid about two fifty for right, it. Right, so it's a bargain. Well, for people. if you look at it, if you and how long have you had it? How old? How old this is, is it? This is a whole new strand. Well, I'm it? thinking. I this don't is think a it's legal. I think I don't well, think we should I'll use. I tell you what, I'm interested in, in Rick. It's just just finding out a little bit about the sort of thing that Carl's got in his home. You know, I, I'm interested in pe if people will phone up to spend a hundred pounds just to go round Carl's house. No, no, no. I won't be. No. What? No, no, they'll come here, I'll bring it to work and they can pick it up here. Don't I'm okay. gonna bring a, fut a futon you. and a table to work. Don't you ride a bike so, hold on, we need someone with a van now. <laughs> yeah. So we need- is, is anyone who wants to- <laughs> but they're not allowed around your house. Can they meet you next door? Someone with a van- <laughs> Could be... they meet you in your street somewhere? Hold on, could they meet what you- What What about the little Chinese fellow that lives across the road on the two bouncers and the old woman who's dead reading a book? Can- can- could you meet him somewhere- I've got an idea. What about if you meet at the end of your street, you blindfold them like they do when- <laughs> when they- when terrorists <laughs> take the negotiator to the, uh, yeah, to the, the hideout. The, the big cheese. And, um, and so you could do that and in, and so, you know, they- they could piece together. Maybe where you live With from sounds. the sounds and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what about that, Carl? That's that seems a great idea. Yeah. And would you sign the futon for people? Do you think? Would you? Uh, would you give them a little signature? Or maybe you at least a bit of purchase. Couldn't you? you could sign the pallet. <sighs> yeah. Or I could try and get work to buy it off me, and then we give it away for rockbusters. Do you think they do some... that? Do you think they do? That? I think probably do it for Foxy with his with yeah. his big. Well, hog. Imagine how big that. Imagine would be. if he wanted to sell his hog. Yeah. That is a motorbike, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been selling his hog for money for years, <laughs> yeah. hasn't he? Oh dear. So oh, right. well, we'll see about that. So, so uh, if people are interested, maybe email uh, Ricky at xfm.co.uk if you're interested in by, futon by Carl's and, futon and, uh, competition. One hundred pounds O N O. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what gear have we got? Anyway? I never knew what that meant. O N O. I I thought it went sort of oh, on no. the nose. Oh no. On the nose. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we got, well, tell you what, we've got, got to give away, Steve. So, actually, I have to say, you've excelled yourself we've got this week. Edward Ashcroft's single coming up soon after <laughs> this. Go on. <laughs> when have you, since when have you taken to talking like that? <laughs> it does amuse me. <laughs> Go on. Um, this is actually, this is a nice little collection here. This is a three DVD set. Uh, David Attenborough's, uh, The Life of Birds, Trials of Life, and Life in the Freezer. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a selection of, uh, animal based documentaries. Yeah. Uh, we've got another what section. What's best at? Well, absolutely. This I is when he uh, goes off the ball and does, like, uh, fast cars. This is, uh, very, very good indeed. This is a, a best of David Bowie compilation. It is a very good, just, just a uh, proper one. Not the, not the rubbish ones that no one else wanted. This is a brilliant compilation yeah, it's got of Bowie. selection on there. Uh, we've got this. Now, this looks like a madness. Oh, no, 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 no. It's far worse than we could possibly have imagined. Is it, it seems to be some kind is it our of house tie in music? with the Our House Madness musical. And it's got a, 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 well, ca a cast of 20 people who wanted to be singers. Uh, I c it's tricky to find out. I can't figure out if it's the originals or not. But needless to say, if you're a Madness fan, I'm sure that'd be an absolute treat. Yeah, you love treat. that. You love that. Uh, love that. now I know that, uh, Steve, I wouldn't mind that DVD collection myself. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's true. the giveaway that, no, we can't. We I'm can't. talking of great compilations. What about this? It's Country Legends. I'm oh, seeing on the front right. there Glenn Campbell. We've got Dolly Parton. We've got, um, what should we call it? On the, on the car, on the front. What should we call it? <laughs> <laughs> from, from a great performer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jake, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh, excellent. Some great yeah. hits from him. So, uh, yeah. that's there as well. well that, what a collection. That's the uh, same XFM compilation again, easy to get hold of. If but the big one, the, the big one, the film that Carl um, oh, picks every week, the, the DVD big one. movie this week. Don't Carl. go out tonight if you've got a DVD player and a television set because no? you'll be staying in and watching this fantastic film. It will tear your soul apart. It's Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> original <laughs> Hellraiser. Bear in mind, it has been on Channel 4 and Channel 5 and on most cable channels <laughs> since it came out. <laughs> but if you haven't seen it, if you're one of the only people who has not seen it, <laughs> and of course you have to be over 18 to play, then you can win Hellraiser. That is fantastic. Well, uh, pl play, a, play a song, Carl, we'll come okay. back to that. More, more great stuff. Indeed. The competition coming up later. Email only, isn't it, Carl? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Futon. <laughs> Futon's still available. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, check the meaning. Well, Carl, you're chuffed, aren't you? So what's happened? Know. What's just happened? Tell the listeners what's this happened. This is you off a bit. Steve's just called up. He's, uh, putting an offer for the foot on and yeah. the table. Yeah. Um, I think he wanted to, he definitely wanted it, but I said, look, you know, think about it over the weekend. Yeah. Give well, you're not call. a hustler. No, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna rush him into it because once he's got it, he's, he can't bring it back. I'm not messing about. No. 
Um, so the bloke said, uh, what sort of wood is it? Carl said, sort of, uh, sort of like a light brown colour. He went, what, beach coloured? <coughs> Carl went, depends what beach you're on. <laughs> Which was nice. <laughs> you do understand there's a wood that's called, called beach. beach. Uh, well, he's, he's happy, he likes the sound of it, nice sure. plum cover. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's Carl going, that'll go with Magnolia, he walks in my he's yeah. just going, I'll tell you what, like, look nice in your spare bedroom. It was like a, well, he an did, episode he did, of Change Rooms, it was like listening to an episode of Carl. He did the deal in, in under three minutes, wasn't it? It was pretty song, good, didn't he? phoned it about halfway through in that song, so, yeah. you work pretty quick, Carl, yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. It's yeah. your manx scally ways. I'm sure it? we're not allowed to do this, though. No, I think it's highly criminal. Yeah. Have you got anything? Are you getting <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I am moving shortly, so I mean, I might, I might come in next week. I could have a couple of. I things, threw away you know. a desk the other day. I got to get rid of a bed, um, a chair, because you know I'm pretty tall. <laughs> this is so pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I moved up to London, my dad said, "Well, you want to be careful because I mean, the seating in a lot of these London pads is bad. Seating very low backs, fashionable, isn't it? Fashionable chairs and stuff. You're a big guy, six foot seven. You need like a decent chair." We went to a shop. It was like a second-hand Ooh, furniture yeah. shop, right? Yeah. I bought this chair, very <laughs> high backed. <laughs> what did you buy? I that bought that it. Bought a solo. I love yeah, that. <laughs> it's just a chair, so I could sit was in it, my room it? and watch TV. But was it a soft chair or was it a wooden chair? It was chair? kind of like a sort of, uh, it was, well, let me explain, because it's kind of like an armchair, but it's kind of got wooden arms. So I get this chair, bring it up to London, I'm thinking, <laughs> I this is a great that. chair, this is a wonderful chair. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be watching TV, everyone else is doing agony. Pipe, you know, yeah, smoking I've got jacket. Chair, yeah. Right? And I brought it up, and someone went, they looked at it, they went, isn't that an orthopedic chair? <laughs> and I looked at it again, right, and I realised it's kind of white <laughs> cleanable. <laughs> it's made of some kind of fabric <laughs> that allows you to just mop it down with a wet what? cloth. Why? Because I think it came from an old people's home. Oh. You know when you see like old people oh, in some no. kind of social room in an old people's home, just yeah. sat watching a little crappy old TV, and yeah. they can, you can wipe everything clean. It was it's oh. one of those chairs. Oh, that's fantastic. So if anyone's maybe they've got an elderly Didn't you relative, keep slipping off. Just goes, like, and it's also the most uncomfortable chair I've because unless you've got chronic back pain, <laughs> it just is, it's just the most uncomfortable chair. It makes you sit bolt upright, We've, if not slightly forward. You've done a good sell on it. I think, uh, <laughs> are the, the phones are going mental. Well, How much do you want for that, If you've had a recent accident, or you've got a disabled, or, or um, or uh, someone in, in the house who's just, uh, elderly, <laughs> then, um, then you might want to get in touch. I'm happy to, you can take that off, man, so for uh, 25 wrong. quid. This is so wrong. 25 quid, I'll, oh, I'll take that. God. Whether you're setting up an old people's home, you know, it's a little <laughs> yeah, pet, pet project. <laughs> yeah, you don't get a lot of grant. We can have, <laughs> exactly. we can have, I mean, and um, because though Steve's such a high flyer, I mean, if it really is a good cause, they just give it to you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's not rush into everything, anything, really. I like to assess each case, you know, individually. Yeah, but so, sure, yeah, certainly sure. if you are a charity, then, then I might go for 20 quid. I can, t you take off my hands for 20 quid. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but otherwise, 25, and I tell you, it's, it's in good condition, cos I haven't really sat on it. Five quid off if you really are You know, and, 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 and there were some stains, I've wiped them clean. Uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. Uh, oh dear. Well, that's fantastic, so we've, uh, we've yeah, well, I'll tell you what we should, we should resuscitate next week, Swap Shop. The multi so, uh, shop. I, I, honestly, there's it's a, a great format. But there's a couple of things I've always wanted to, to get about. Swap Shop is one of them, and the other one is Superstars. I don't remember Superstars. Superstars was great because it was like the people of their time. So you'd have like people like nowadays you'd have you'd have Beckham and uh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, who's a tennis player? Who's R a Rizetsky. Yeah, Rizetsky. Yeah, and they they have to compete. So all these people have to compete at each other's sports. And they have to choose seven out of ten sports. And there's a leaderboard and there's a big final. Oh, old Keegan came off his bike. It is, it's not, it's not like it's to win it. No, no, it's real sports. It's, real proper, it's sports. proper sports. It's 100 metres, tennis, weightlifting, all the real sports that you, you can't do your own sport. Well, I know you're a pretty big, uh, guy now in, in British TV. You're a bit of a big shot. What do you reckon? Pull some strings? Let's get it back on <laughs> Let's there. Get it back Superstars. On Superstars. Sounds fantastic. Me, Johnny Vegas, Peter Kay. <laughs> The bigger fella, <laughs> exactly. I think maybe the, the comedy comedy superstars. Um, what we got next? We have got a bit of Springsteen, haven't we? Let's play Springsteen. This is uh, a track from his current album, The Rising. A lot of people Brilliant. think Bruce is a bit M O R, a bit middle of the road, or whatever. But you know, I just think piss <laughs> off. Yeah, <laughs> I just think screw you. Let's I just play think it. yeah, get lost, oh, you. Yeah. Imagine this, you're open top caddy, yeah, you're just going around country. Route 66. You just, you just you're going home maybe for Thanksgiving. Yeah, to see yeah. your folks. That just just turn up the radio if you are. Play the tune. Probably gone. not. Though. That just reminded me when I brought a. So stop it for a second. <laughs> just realised when I brought, when I brought a woman shambles. back and she saw the orthopedic chair. <laughs> <Did> you, <laughs> you bring a woman back to your pad. Oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and the harness. Yeah. And <laughs> and the, <laughs> the truss. Yeah. And the, yeah. <laughs> just again. Can you give me those two splints? I'm sorry. <laughs> those two splints there. Well, I've got to go. Have you? <laughs> Is this a potty under the bed? <laughs> <laughs> 
The Rising title track from Bruce Springsteen's current album, The Great Rising. Track. Yeah, it's good. Great, tune. it's that, that feeling of it's melancholy and uplifting. We've had quite a, a, an interactive show so far because we've got a, a call that Superstars is coming back. Mm. It's due to come back in the BBC schedules, which is. Great news. Apparently, was Steve Redgrave is one of them. I just don't think will professional footballers be allowed to take part these days, though. When they're on fifty grand a week, you, you can't really have them falling off bikes and hurting uh, their ankles. Can yeah. you? Ian McCaskill last night. <laughs> yeah, I'm celebrity thick. Yeah. Ian McCaskill. <laughs> oh, he fell off his bike about three it. times, didn't he? Oh, if it, did, did you see celebrity thick? No, I haven't seen there it. There was a great moment where they had to go into the, a thing called a bod pod, and you sit in it, it looks like Space Age, and it and it analyzes you and it tells you percentage body fat. Now, I think um, men are meant to be about sort of uh, fifteen to twenty-five percent body fat. Women are meant to be like about twenty to thirty body fat. And they all went in there and. Um, he went in there and it said, uh, Ian McCaskill and it came up, uh, 34% body fat or whatever, slightly overweight. Uh, I'm gonna come to the 38% overweight. Then it went, um, the other one, um, uh, 45% body fat, obese. Then it went, Jono. <laughs> Did it say, I don't want to tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it went, uh, 50, 50, 50 percent body fat, um, uh, very obese. Then Rick Waller was sat in there. And it came up sixty percent body fat, and I wanted it to come up slug. <laughs> God but it on. came up more than it's sixty. You are sixty percent fat. So, so sixty percent of him is yeah. fat. Yeah, mm. yeah. Sixty yeah. percent of his entire makeup. That's extraordinary. It is. Well, you yeah. know my feelings about Wallace. Well, don't, let's go on to it. Well, that's I mean, the reason I don't watch the show. Actually, I do feel a bit sorry for him. I mean, he is, he is. I think he is trying. Although the fella there. Um, thinks he's not trying, so I don't know who to believe. Steve. Sure, yeah, I don't know yeah, who to believe yeah. Wallow, and he does get pains and that, and he is a bit. Yeah. The problem know. is, right? He does like his food. Yeah, we we all like our food. But if he didn't do the exercise, he wouldn't be as hungry, and he might not get fat. This is a whole new nutritional outlook. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're saying, don't exercise and carry on eating. And that's, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Can I, no, let, me, no, let, let me write that one down. I will send that to the British <laughs> nutritional organisation. Yeah, no, that's good. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> okay, well, no, no that's a, it's no, a good. I'm no doctor or anything. <laughs> Whoa, Yo, come off it. Me, Stop me, being me. so bloody modest, <laughs> please. You are a doctor. You're you just, are. Yeah. Aren't you, aren't you not, you're not a doctor. Seriously, you're not, you didn't qualify. But <laughs> that's interesting. You dropped out early, or that's mad. That is mad. I mean, you, you're as good as doctor. You just you just didn't get the paperwork, or whatever. You just didn't turn yeah. up for the exam. Yeah. Yeah. He was just saying that Bruce brings him, uh, um, depressed him a little bit. Yeah. Because it reminds him of when he worked in the supermarket. And, uh, I said, it's funny how a song can do that, take you right back there. He went, yeah, nothing else can do that. I said, well, actually, smell is the most evocative sense, because smell is linked to memory in the brain. And he went, yeah, they probably said that before music, though. <laughs> And now all signs are going, we, got, we better revisit this because there's music now. Yeah, yeah. We've had this theory knocking around for, you know, ten minutes. I went to see Bruce, you'll be pleased to know. I just want uh, the fans of the show to know that I did make it to Bruce Springsteen's he concert last week. And uh, he started with that song we just played, and it was dynamite. I mean, he never let up. Almost three hours, he rocked the joint. He's 53, he was sliding across, it was pure rock and roll. Pumping our fist, sliding across the floor on his knees, he was jumping on the piano. It was real Jerry Lee Lewis rock and roll. And uh, it was dynamite. And um, I just was looking around though, and, and when I am the trendiest person at a gig, oh, dear. then I'm in trouble. Do you know what I mean? And there was some of the people there, I imagined, you know on Amazon.com, um, it says like, people who bought X also bought Y. Yeah. And I yeah. think people who bought tickets for Bruce probably bought tickets for Mark Knopfler. Yeah, uh, Dave Gilmore. Yeah, Pink Floyd, without Pink Floyd. But there's Stevie Nicks. But there's also yeah. But then there's also you know the mon all the monsters right. They probably buy stones when they visit. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, and yeah. probably it's the blue wash jeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the small waistcoats. Yeah, over a denim shirt, plaid plaid shirt. Maybe yeah. sort of like Timberlands. Nothing wrong with Timberlands. I'm not. That's libelous. Sure. No. Sure. See, I've done it again. Yeah. But so it was hell getting out. I couldn't find. I mean, I, I went to the tube and it was a nightmare because some of the tubes weren't running. I just said, my friend, I'll sort this. You know, da, da, da. stormed off trying to find a cab. Couldn't find a cab. Wandering around Wembley, just livid. I mean, fuming because I couldn't find a cab. Just I was screaming because I was going. I've got money. I'm on the radio. I've had a t TV show. I've got the cash. I'm willing to spend it. There's yeah. no one who can help me get home. And I was. Thinking, I've seen him shout this in Brewer Street, yeah. just to stand in the middle. Go on. And I was thinking to myself, what would you have done there? Because in the end, I just sat in a little calf, had something to eat. But you, I mean, if you couldn't get a cab, what would you have done? Just because there's a couple of, I was looking, there's a couple of hotels <laughs> near Wembley. I was thinking you'd have just checked in. Yeah, and just and stayed till the morning. Yeah, when, when there's a cab, let me know. But I was thinking because you were thinking of going. Would you have booked a cab beforehand? 
Uh, yeah. Would you have, would you have thought to do that? Yeah, I'd have got a cab there and I'd have booked a cab well, somewhere. Well, the, uh, well, the helicopter just took you back home. Yeah. Oh, he's oh, having a dig, isn't he? He's having a laugh, isn't he? Really? Yeah. 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 Play the ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Death in Vegas. Scorpio Rising. Featuring the voice of, is it Noel Gallagher? Liam, isn't it? Is it Liam? Sounded a bit like him. Liam, yeah. 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 It's yeah. Right, isn't it? Excellent, yeah. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get this show well and truly on the road. Um, we better start, what, ed educating Ricky next car? What have you got for me? I can't wait for learning. I need learning. I need education. We should just teach explain something. Uh, obviously, for those that have just tuned in, Carl, uh, tries to teach Ricky three things each week. Based on the pun title. And yeah, each of them, uh, each of them, just to tantalise Ricky, is, yeah. um, abbreviated into some kind of headline. It, a cryptic a clue involving a, involving a pun. So what have you got for us uh, this yeah, week? They are, they are really cryptic this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, first story, little headline, is, um, don't worry about him. He candle it. <laughs> he candle it. Yeah. Sounds a bit like he can handle it, but it's yeah. not. Put it. Uh, second one. <laughs> uh, I'll get a lobe of this. I'm. I'm. <laughs> get a lobe of this. This is classics. Who can forget? Get a lobe of this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Coming and, soon. And stocking eight kilo waterman. <laughs> Go on. Second one. Yeah. I'm committed to this treatment. Mm. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. All okay. right. Tantalising. Yeah. And the last one, um, uh, the police are causing a bit of a stare. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the way he looks when he says it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I wish we could see it. Can't we get Carl on telly? Oh. There's got to be a way. There's we got cannot. To be a way. Uh, that, that, with all the cable channels, anyone can get on telly these days. Let's right, get, let, so let's, let's phone up, let's get you on choice or something. Just what? a little, just Carl. What, 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 what are you going for? Oh, then? he can handle it, I think. Don't worry about him, he candle it. He can yeah. handle it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's hear this one. Right, are you familiar with the, uh, the phrase, burning the candle at both ends? Yeah. Do you know how it's come about? I know a man who well, does. I, I assumed that it was to get more light in the room. How would that work? Well, they'd put it sideways and light both wicks, so out of one candle they could get no. two. No, go on. No, what it is... Oh, it, it means, uh, it means you're, you're staying, you're doing too much, you're staying up too much, right. you're not getting enough sleep and you're- Well, years ago. Yeah. Um, when they didn't have light bulbs and that. Oh yeah, what year is this? Quite literally, literally ages ago specifically. Yeah, quite a bit back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, didn't have light bulbs and that, so they used to have candles when in When did the, the light bulb come in? Cause I, I can't remember at the moment. What? I, phew, don't know. Okay, go on. So, um, yeah, so they've, they've got a light bulb. You're not, you, you wouldn't know, you're a, doc, you're a doctor, you're not a historian, go on. Uh, and people who worked a lot of hours, yeah. How many? Literally lots. They get up early in the morning because they have to be up early. Yeah. And it's dark outside so they'd light the candle. Sure. And they'd wear it out a bit. And then they'd be getting in late as well. Yeah. And like, they'd be like, oh, it's dark, I'll have to light the candle again. And the burning candle at both ends of the day. So that's where the saying comes from, burning the candle at both ends. So, all right. That's a uh, little lesson. Yeah, yeah lesson good. one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can I have? No, well, no, I, you, you can't. Have you can't one rush yet. into them, Rick. You've got to. I've got to soak in that. You've got to soak that one in. Any questions for Carl off the back of that? What do you think? So, so, so people were. I mean, basically, where this comes from is people were <laughs> <they're> <laughs> literally brilliant. The kind of like things they did day. Sure. <laughs> There you go. So we've still got. Go on. I'm committed to this treatment. And I can't wait. This is like this is like Christmas Rick, Eve for me. It's it. like Christmas. I've got to open another present now. No, I'm afraid we've got to save it. But Rick, listen. Um, we often get a lot of email correspondence during sure. the show, Rick, uh, which I don't I don't sort of pass on to you because I mean you're busy, you're planning the show and stuff. Sure, you've got sure, a lot of ideas, you've sure. got music and stuff to worry yeah. about. So I check the emails and we get a lot of response. A lot of people that obviously uh, you know want to give us feedback. Uh, just a sample one um, from Richard Anderson. He's just uh, emailed us in here, Rick, because uh, he's been listening to the show. He says, Ricky, your show is appalling. Um, are you actually aware you're on the radio or has someone just secretly stuck a microphone on you? That's from Richard Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah. the, that's typical of the kind of feedback Rick we're getting <laughs> really? today. So, it's that um, good, is it? So that's, that's the kind of, yeah, high positive praise that we're getting. So, uh, I'm, 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 keep, I'm uh, glad Anderson's listening because I wanted him. I yeah, was, no, I mean, I, I was gunning for him as a fan. I was worried that early, Anders, early uh, on in our career. So, uh, but, uh, I, think, I think he's hooked now, though. But thanks, uh, Anders, for <laughs> getting in touch. Good work. <laughs> he's sitting think. through it for Hellraiser, though, isn't he? Yeah, well, that's still to come. Oh, still, still, to come. still to come. What we're playing? Uh, a little bit of old dirty bur. I can't. I can't say the word. It's offensive. Old old dirty bollocks. Is it old dirty bollocks? <laughs> no, 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 no. What is it? Old dirty. Old dirty big cock. What is it? What is it? I can't tell you. It's offensive. 
breaks up. Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah. Funny word, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's really funny what word, other funny it? words are there, Although Carl? XFM's a funny word, I just yeah. say the letters out, cos mm. the word doesn't make sense. Just, uh, let me just check Richard Anderson's email again, just remind myself of- Go on. Uh, Ricky, your show is appalling. Richard Anderson, thanks. What I like about, uh, Dickie, <laughs> Dickie Anders <laughs> is that he's obviously so angry, he's so annoyed by the show <laughs> that he's bothered to email just to get the venom out. <laughs> Otherwise you'd just think he'd switch over. Well, he's you know, obviously so annoyed, he's he just switched on the computer. He knows how to hurt someone as well. well. Exactly. He's really taken the time out to, I'm uh, to show his disapproval. I'm thinking of giving up. <laughs> mm, I'll tell um, you what though, it, can, it, it is pretty hard to listen to. What this? Yeah. I've listened back to the tape, that one when, you, when you're making that thing for the best of. Yeah. And I- I mean, I sounded like Albert Taplock. I sa- I really sounded like some sort of punch drunk stroke victim. And I-, I Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. I don't remember myself like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I do apologise. It's- it's not a great planned show, slick word of articulate <laughs> no, sentence, no, no, is it? No, but, no, I mean, no, then, no. who is? But I think, I mean, there's so many shows that are, you know, nowadays on radio. I think there's- there's a lot of stuff that's heavily formatted, you know, and there's with, you know, I don't know, presenters who are professional and have got some sort of degree of talent yeah. and ability to sort of string a sentence together. You know, I'm thinking Chris Moyles. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. But I mean, I'm bored with those, those yeah, exactly. people, you know, I, I think we need a little bit of, a little bit of calm hey, in our lives. I'm just thinking actually, I've just suddenly struck me, if you want to get rid of your, um, your furniture. Got a buyer. You've already got a buyer. Because if, if there's any st other stuff, what I, we, <laughs> Uh, we were clearing some stuff out of our place recently and we just dumped some stuff outside on the street because we were going to take it and, and take it to the tip later. Just dumped some stuff outside. And I have never seen so many people come out of the woodwork scavenging through our garbage. It was incredible. They were like zombies. Well, that's what I was they saying. They were like flies around here. Uh, it was when crazy. I said to Carl, when I said to Carl, uh, That's what you should just do. Just dump it outside because it'll get taken. When he went, he said, he said, do you think I asked enough, Andrew? I went, yes, definitely. He went, oh, I could ask. I said, no, don't do that. I said, because you'll end up having to pay the council to take it away. He said, I wouldn't. He said, I'd rather just dump it and let a little homeless fella have it. And <laughs> then he went, and most of the little homeless fella sitting at the desk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine, right, <laughs> that I walk past, he's sat outside Hearts, right, the little 24 hour shop, yeah. he's sat outside there and he goes, have you got any change? And I go, I can do better than that. Yeah, here's a chair and table. Here's, here's a, a futon. futon. Yeah. A futon, no less. Not your boring bed, but a trendy, yeah. Well, but the thing is, I, the amazing the number of people that would stop to look at our junk. What? There was a car driving by with a family and kids, perfectly respectable, just driving past, you know, on the way to somewhere, stopped, got out, got the kids out of the car, come on kids, let's just look through this junk. But I like the you idea You said that we were going to Walton Towers, yeah. Dad. No, no, sorry, no time. We're not going this to the zoo, let's look through this rubbish. We're not going looking through people's rubbish Put again, these gloves we? on, look through this shit. Ow! That's a yeah, needle. That's a needle. <laughs> it was, I mean, who does that? It was like a Saturday afternoon. Kids were just gonna go and look through some rubbish. And one guy, this is the most incredible one, one guy, I caught him going through the bins as I came, as I came in. I said, alright, what are you doing? He was one of those homeless guys who likes to remain dignified. Why did you say, what are you doing? Well, because it was my house. I had to go part, I had to squeeze past him. He wasn't in your him. kitchen. He was in our front garden. Oh, was he? Yeah, going through it. He torn the bags open. He was going through it. I said to him, what are you up to? He went, oh yeah, just looking at this sort of stuff. Don't, don't worry, I'll just, I'll, I'll clean it all up afterwards. Just looking for a few odds and ends, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh well, you can take what you want. You know, it's all going away. Yeah, no, thanks very much, thanks. Yeah. So we went off, right? I didn't think anything of it. I was walking past the shops the following day. There's a little sort of, uh, kind of 7-Eleven, right? I was walking past. I thought, oh, that's interesting. A Gil Scott Heron album for sale. And I looked, I thought, wait a minute, this is all our rubbish. And the guy had set up like a little car boot sale outside the 7-Eleven on the pavement. He'd taken our junk, he'd marked on prices. There's like an old RAC book from 1976 that had been lying in the house, a Yellow Pages. You know, and he'd marked up the How prices. How much is Yellow Pages? So I'm glad you were. What year was 50 that 50p, I snapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a bargain. <laughs> and um, it was incredible, the, the cheek of just selling our junk. Outside? En Enterprise car. You, you, you do that. What did you used to do? You, did, you used uh, to sell flowers? I and sold stuff. flowers. I yeah. sold, uh, sold fizzy drinks at school. Did you? Yeah. What did you made? It was Soda Stream, yeah. Yeah. Made, made some, uh... Well, of course, when you were doing your Pilkies making music, your disco, yeah. you used to go into mum's bedroom and could find a pair of tights and a cigar. Yeah, they'd, yeah, they'd be prizes. Uh, yeah. Did your dad one. used to smoke cigars in tights or, or your mum? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them? He's just... Go on. Right, well, let's, let's, uh... Yeah, we're educating Ricky. No, no, no. That's, we're teasing that. 
Uh, Rockbusters. Well, I think we should play a tune and come back with Rockbusters. Oh, so the show's falling down. We were going so well. And no, it's just the energy, isn't it? The first hour we got through. I'm just in good spirits. Is this, this still good? Is it this I'm show? I'm enjoying it, yeah. Yeah. Good it's still good, is it? I'll just, let me just check, cause, uh, just check what Richard Anderson thinks of it. <laughs> good evening, Ryan. Right, okay. No, he thinks it's appalling. He, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, the Dixter thinks it's appalling, so, uh, we should what, play what, a tune. Cause what, he can play some music. This? Better of Aqualung. Oh. Aqualung. Aqualung. Rockbusters next. I like that. That's great, isn't it? Aqualung. Good time's gonna come. Well, Carl, we've got loads of ideas. We've got emails coming in left, right and centre. I think you've caused quite a stir. I think you've turned this show around, to be honest. I'm being, honestly, yeah, no, you've done really well. You're actually acting a bit like a producer, isn't he? Mm. And, mm. uh, you're coming through in your own right. Yeah. Um, we've had a great suggestion, We've we? had a great email here. Let me this, just check, this, uh, Carl. Let me just check. Listen this to is this. From, this is from, uh, Jeff Dunn. He's a big fan of the show and he's just had a genius idea. He's saying, you're moving house, Carl. Why don't Ricky and I come round? We can do a live outside broadcast from your flat. It's we genius. can observe from your kitchen those weirdos that live opposite. Yeah. We can just, maybe just wander around, just see the kind of place that you've got, you know, see, maybe check out your record collection, your clothes, what you've got in the bathroom. It'd be amazing. Your futon. It'd be like Louis Theroux. Wouldn't it? We'd be Louis Theroux. Come on, Carl, this is a dynamite idea. Nah. Why? I, I, I don't want you coming around making a mess on that. We won't make a mess. A mess. We won't make a mess. Take our shoes off. When have I ever made a mess in the studio? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? We're not going to make a mess. What? What? We're not going to have anything with us. But what's in it for anyone? Well, it's just a fascinating insight into yeah, you. Yeah, but, right, when I see that little Chinese kid across the road who's <laughs> dancing about in his underpants, yeah. that's in the evening, yeah. right? He's not gonna be doing that on a Saturday, <laughs> so you'll be disappointed there. Sure. <laughs> that old, that old woman. But you could ch at least show us the room in which he really, dances. Yeah, when you say little Chinese kid, he's a thirty-five-year-old man, isn't he? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. But anyway, that, that's beside the point, you know, we'll find our own <laughs> amusement. No, I don't, I don't, and the, the w woman downstairs has got a baby and if we make loads of noise and it's, that gets We're stressed out. We're not gonna out. make noise, are we? Just gonna have a conversation in your flat. Have a cup of tea. Yeah, but if we do an OB, we need to get like a car outside with a big aerial on it and well, the parking's bad round our way. What do you mean you have to do a, what do you mean? To do a outside broadcast. Can't they put in an ISDN line just for the day? No, so no, because I'll make a mess of the wall and I'm, I've, I won't get my deposit back. So <laughs> we'll leave that. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. You know he's <laughs> going around painting all the little holes, uh, to get his deposit back <laughs> in, the, in the wall. <laughs> he wants to get his deposit back. He's probably cost me about 400 quid redecorating. Let's <laughs> 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 yeah. remind people, Carl, of the, uh, the prizes for Rockbusters this week. It's right. dynamite stuff. We've got the David Attenborough DVD Nature Collection. We've got a number of CDs, the best of David Bowie. We've got a Madness CD. Not quite sure whether that song's uh, from the musical or or their original tunes. Uh, country Legends, two CDs there of uh, great country music, Brilliant. and the uh, remix to XFM compilation. Plus, of course, the big movie prize this week. Um, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. If you haven't seen it already, then I assume you <laughs> have never seen a film before. <laughs> Because I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen Hellraiser. But obviously you have to be above 18 to join. Uh, Come to on then. Play the Come on so, How um, long would you want to be around for? Is this just for the... Just for the show. Couple of hours. Two hours. Did you just get the desk in there? Mm. A live OB. We could check out the futon, we could sing check, its check the fault in, right? Yeah. Oh, you might have sold that by now. we could have someone it? come round and buy it live on air. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's great. Uh, great what's, uh, how, did, how did Graceland start? Cause that was <laughs> That, well, that was his normal house, and then he took <laughs> over. <laughs> right, anyway, Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, go on. I, I give a cryptic clue. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a letter, and it makes up a band. He right? never said the word cryptic a few months ago. I love it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel it's like our own little Eliza Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> right, even Richard will like this one. Mm hmm. Um, here we go then. First one. There's I three of them. Go on. And you email in. If this doesn't turn Dicky round, nothing will. Right. This is an email only competition. Email only. Um, right, here's the first one. Uh, initial is B, so it's B. a band starting with B. Okay. And the cryptic clue is, I don't like them birds, uh, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. I don't like them birds, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. Next one. Right, the next one. Uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Is that a cryptic clue or is that just- <laughs> Is that just a is thought, that just you know? point? Is that, that's, yeah. that's the cryptic clue. Okay. And the initials there are PD. Okay. And, uh, the last one, uh, that oh, one- I've got that one, that's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh God. And the last one is, uh, oh, God. that bloke who does- 
Come on. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> it's making me laugh. Come on, Carl. Be professional. Right, right, right the last one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, it's making me laugh. Oh, come on, I'll oh. come and read them then. No, no, uh, I got, I got, come I got, on, Carl. Right, here we go. They don't do this on <laughs> Blockbusters on TV, do they? No, come right. on. That bloke who does sport on telly, <laughs> 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 he's got a little kid, right? Uh, initials DC. Uh, right. is that, was I'm that the completely clue? confused by that. Was that the clue? Yeah, that bloke who does sport on telly, yeah. he's got a little kid, initials DC. Okay, is that a band? Um, what artist? Uh, it's, oh, well, I'm not a gonna cheese. tell you. I'm this not is gonna a cheese. This is a sandwich. <laughs> is it, what is it? Is it Fine. a band or an artist? Right, so just quickly recap. That's okay. It's, 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 it's a Come D. on, Carl. Right. Come on. Quick, quick recap. The first one is B. I don't think them birds should be around in this area. Right, that's B. <laughs> right? Second one. He doesn't like women, yet he's got a few kids. It's a bit weird. That's PD. And the final one. That bloke who does sport on the telly, he's got a little kid. Right? D. C. All right, and uh, it's Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to enter for a uh, Hellraiser. Oh, I'll tell you what, continue to do a little theme here of like some old stuff people haven't heard of. If you're under thirty, you've probably never heard of this band. It's also a new thing I want to introduce. Uh, it's uh, it's um, show up Camfield. Camfield mm. talks the talk. He doesn't walk the walk. He doesn't play some rock classics on his show because he's scared. I'm going to play the tracks that Camfield's too scared to play. Mm. This is Kansas and Carry On Your Way with Sun. All right, Raw Nirvana. Amazing. We we're just talking. We we're getting excited. Yeah. Yeah, got an incredible brilliant. voice he has. And Grohl, drumming, it's, it's brilliant. You know you're right, the new one from Nirvana. Well, we're, it's time for Educating Ricky Part 2, isn't it? I'm yeah. excited, Carl. I'm gonna learn so much <laughs> from this. What's the choices again? What's right, you've got, uh, you've got left, Still, uh, still keep phoning your answers to, uh, um, Email. Email, sorry, yeah. Uh, the answers to Rockbusters. Rock busters. Yeah. Right, okay, Educating Ricky Part 2. Um, right. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. Is, is one. Oh, I've got to go for that one. Yeah? Yeah. Or oh, the other one is the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> he still says it like it's the best thing he's ever come up with, which yeah. is <laughs> It could be. Right, go on then. I'm committed to this treatment. Right. Do you know the saying? Oh, is it just sayings now? Uh Are they all sayings this week? No, 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 no. They're not. Okay. No, the other one isn't. Uh Frog in your throat? <laughs> The saying, there's a frog in your throat. Yeah, I assume true. it's uh, when you uh, croak a little bit, you sound like a, <coughs> a frog. No, no. Right, might, might sound, seem a bit weird, this one, right? But years ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, w w what is that clue committed to this treatment? It's about frogs committed. Kermit. <laughs> 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 probably works better with a K and an yeah. ER written down. Well, also, if you'd pronounced it committed. Yeah. But uh, not committed. Yeah. <laughs> Committed to this treatment! <laughs> <laughs> right, go on then. That's right, genius. Uh, so yeah. For uh, well, what? You get, you go to the doctors and you go with throat certain a bit. Right. Mm. And what they did ages ago. Ages ago? What year was this approximately? We are going back quite a bit with this oh, one. Oh, okay. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> He got into this treat. Imagine years ago. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, right, keep your, keep your mouth open, I need to look at your tonsils. And the jaw would ache a bit. Because because they weren't as quick back then because they didn't have the technology and stuff and they'd sure. have to like stare at it and study it and stuff mm. and like you get an achy jaw right keeping their mouth open yeah like you get you know, yeah yeah Mars yeah. bar yeah. or whatever yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. Like yeah. That. Yeah. so um they they sat there and they used to always close the mouth and they, it used to annoy the doctor yeah. right sure. so what they did yeah. they used to get a toad right and pour it in the mouth rubbish <laughs> okay keep rubbish. The, keep talking. Keep talking. And, um, that way they couldn't close the mouth because either they'd squash it. Right. Or, apparently you're not allowed to, uh, lick a toad's back. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor would have them for breaking the law? No, 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 but it's poisonous. <laughs> right, a toad's back. You should never lick a toad's back. Or, or, or put it in your mouth, really. Oh, just, 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 just stop no, no, for a second. Wait, wait, wait. Why, what? Can I just ask one question? Go on, yeah, just go ask on. One question. I've got a few, but no, go on. I, I, sure. My initial thought is, <laughs> it sounds like a brilliant bit of, of sort of medical uh, knowledge there. It's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. My only thought is, how does the doctor see past the toad? Yeah. At your tonsils? What's he actually looking at with the mouth open? Surely the toad is, is in the like way. Is it around in the way? It, it didn't say. Uh, right. Sorry, and, uh, my, my question, my first question is, was this on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, okay. D Carl, that is bollocks. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, Well, <laughs> alright then. Let's turn this round. Where does the saying, uh, you got a frog in your throat come uh, from? Probably because you sound a bit croaky. 
Probably that. <laughs> Probably because you sound a little bit like a frog when you got a sore throat. <laughs> Carl, did you not question it just for a moment when you read it? Just for a second, didn't you think that seems an odd approach? Firstly, why a frog of yeah. all the different because species? Because it's poisonous. It's poisonous. A toad. No, so a toad. So it's a toad right. as well. Yeah, well, that it worked. I'm committed. Worked. No, no, no. I was gonna, no, I was going to change it to. Uh, have you heard the news? Toad day. <laughs> <laughs> but I went with, I went with the frog. <laughs> Right, so, right. So, so that's rubbish. So that's rubbish. Next, um, <laughs> can I have, um... <laughs> let's play a tune, let's come up with the last one. Oh. Oh, can, can I, I just play? say... No, just play it, just play it. Yeah? Yo, Carl. <laughs> I think my, uh, mate Dave, who sent me an incredible four-disc compilation. That was one of the tunes on there. It looks uh, professional. It's amazing. It's incredible, the effort yeah. Oh, he's gone to too much effort. effort. Uh, Ben Queller, uh, it's a track called In Other Words from his album Sha Sha. Open wide? Uh, oh, dear, <laughs> that's interesting. What is it, You've actually got a frog in your throat. Uh, I, I didn't get there. I put it in there. <laughs> that's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard, Carl. Why don't you think when you read these things? I, I think there's always going to be a bit of truth in all of these. I mean, that fella called up, didn't he, and said, um, he said, I'm not sure about the, you know, putting a frog in your throat if you've got, ton you know, problems with your tonsils or whatever. But he said, years ago, um, if someone had toothache, yeah. they'd get hold of a frog and strap yeah. it to the face. Yeah, sure. So maybe down the line, you know, maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe they did. Uh, 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 I think Caligula made what is emperor, uh, a horse and emperor as well, but I mean, you know, it doesn't- go on. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in touch. Excellent. Um, I think, so he's obviously- and We've listening. turned him round up, well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in, he, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So, uh, we've turned him round. We've turned no, him round. do you know where the phrase counting my feet comes from? Well, in the olden days, right, and I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a, as a sign of respect, like say a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's where that comes from, that's where Carl. Comes from. Well, what, what about the, uh, the frog thing? With a, it's with, a with a poisonous back. It's rubbish. That's true. No, the toad toads have, um, uh, the, the secretions in the-, the, the Why? The, the, why? Why? But why? they didn't put it in people's mouths. No, so, why? well, I'll tell you why. When a, 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 a badger or a, a heron tastes the toad, it's horrible. Blech. The toad might die, but it, it's for the good of the species, because then, Think how many toads, like looking like that, a heron could eat in its lifetime. So the fact that one toad sacrificed itself, all those other toads in that heron's manner but, will be but safe. Why? Why? I mean, you know, we're, we've talked about animals a lot on the show, right? Yeah. And when God made a toad, sure, right? right? Okay. Well, so on, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there straight don't, away. Don't. Just let him carry on. Right. Okay. Like. There's, there's annoying things out there, you know, jellyfish is a big problem with me. I don't understand why, <laughs> what they do in the sea and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, but we, we'll leave them. Go right? we, we won't, me, but go on. We won't, we won't talk about jellyfish. No. With the toad, right, um, if it's to protect itself. Yeah. Right, now no, say- No, protect itself, it's to protect its species. No, 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 yeah, but that, surely, right, if, if the toad had a choice, if God said, right, what I'm gonna do for you here, um, you can have something like a lobster's got claws, big claws to have a fight. <laughs> or, I can give you something that if someone's having a go at you, you've got to try and persuade them to lick you back. <laughs> as, as a defence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What use is, right, oh, oh right. God. Well, I, t I tell you why. What is God The fact to? that there are still toads around is a testament to that defence working. That's all I'm gonna say, okay? If the toad had died out, you'd have a point. But they're still around. It works, all right? And right. don't start slagging God off. <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. He, I mean, he, basically, I think he took on too much. <laughs> Particularly in one week. Exactly, it was crazy. <laughs> Danger High Voltage, Electric 6, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl's getting all flustered because I put an elastic band around his head. And we've had a definition of- Well, uh, hang on a sec, the because there's an update to that, really. Go on. Um, we did just have, uh, one, uh, definition here of, uh, a frog in the throat. Apparently this has come from some, uh, internet site, so who knows, uh, how convincing it is. But it says, frog in the throat meaning suffering from temporary hoarseness, needing to clear the throat. Origin from the old English frogger meaning hoarseness. That's from Chris. Now that sounds slightly suspect to me. Why? But, uh, frogger? I mean, it, it seems odd that it would derive from that when it so clearly appears to be, <laughs> you sound like a frog when you, when you have a sore throat. Yeah, but, but, but the word frog, could mm. come from Frogger because it sounds 
I like it. I didn't know it wasn't Frog uh, game you could play on the yeah, uh, yeah. on the Spectrum. Spectrum. Oh, that's yeah. Great game. But yeah. listen, hang on. There's an update to that because uh, just to well, the point. Frog, of course, Rana Temporara. That's the Latin name. Well, you, your toad is Buffo Buffo. You, right. you may be trying to show off, but I think <laughs> you're about to embarrass yourself as Go well on. because you've been slagging off young Carl. Yeah. It says here another email. It doesn't tell us who it's from. Although it's hard to believe now, at one time medieval physicians believed that the secretions of a frog could cure a cough if they were coated on the throat of the patient. Yeah. That in itself yeah. sounds repulsive. But what makes the idea even worse is the application of the secretions. Instead of painting the treatment on something which may also have seemed uh, rational, a live frog was placed into the mouth of the sufferer, where it remained until the physician decided that the treatment was complete. Right. Uh, apparently Shakespeare's son-in-law, that's a question mark, I don't know what that means. Anyway, it's no wonder that today a froggy or croaky attempt at speech is said to be a frog in your throat. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can see that what's happened there is Carl's misread or been slightly misinformed about uh, a medieval practice. In a <laughs> sense, you're both winners, just for taking part. <laughs> 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 what's your final one, Carl? Right, the final story <laughs> is, um, the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, it's about this fella. Uh, I think it's in England somewhere. Yeah. Don't know when it happened, but uh... Literally ages ago or? Basically, well, it's when, I think it's when they were trying to crack down on like drunken people walking about in the street. Oh yeah. And they found this Saturday. fella. It's Saturday, that one. <laughs> and uh, found this fella and uh, all the local people were saying, oh look at him wandering around, he's, he's drunk and what have you. That's not right, get the police in. He got arrested and that, and they got him in the court. And uh, the judge was there and he says, uh, so you know, what's all this? What's going on? What are you doing wandering about when you've had a drink? You know the rules. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You had a glazed expression on your face. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, he only- he only had a glass eye. So Did he have two glass eyes? No, he had one. But that okay. was- th th they, they were about to sort of lock him up. Was he a bit pissed up as well? Well, he was- he was pretty livid. <laughs> <laughs> but was he also drunk with a glass eye? No, no, that's oh, the weird right. thing. He right. wasn't even- he hadn't even had a drink. So they just thought because he had a weird stare. Because- because his eyes were all glazed. Yeah. Well, uh, well, where'd you get this from? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> 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 why are you telling me this? I don't- I don't- I mean, thank you, because it's, you know, killed a couple of minutes, but why is this educating me? What are you- what are you telling me because here? Because the, the, there's a bit of a thing there, a bit of a fable, that don't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah? So, the guy, he hadn't even had a drink. He's probably just been shopping, yeah. Uh, walking down the street, and everyone's like getting involved. Like, what's he doing? He I shouldn't. Don't, hang on, I don't understand. He's walking down the street, happens to have a glass eye. He was doing nothing else to suggest he was drunk. You don't pick people up just because their eye looks like. Oh, you know. But well, even well, if it happened, why are you telling me? With no, with no particular detail. Oh. I know this, but we're going to get. It's not enough information. I know. Yeah. No, oh. th th there's a bit of a lesson there. Educating Ricky, just you know, just watch what you say. Uh, don't always jump to conclusions. Oh, 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 the, the, the only education I can take from that is that, um, if I ever do become a policeman, I shouldn't just arrest people because they look a bit drunk. I should just <laughs> tap their eye with a pen and go, goes, <laughs> Oh, okay, on you on go. You go. Oh. On you go, yeah. C guys, can I just look at that? I'm just gonna email Richard Anderson and tell him I agree. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, we're running out of time and that. <laughs> Oh, we've got how, the where did the phrase we've got, frog in the throat come from? We've got, we've got we've, it here, it's been, it's been told. Well, there's three. Should we play a tune and come out with that? Have well, we got anything lined up? Uh, yeah, we've got the song with a story in it. Come on, okay. Carl, let's do something. Quick, play a record. Song with a story in it. But never mind that, just, they're listening. We, this, we discussed this off air, come on. Play a record. Right. Play it. It's, King, 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 King. it's a song with a good story in it. You've got to listen to the words. <laughs> Carl, what was that? That was your little song that's with a story. Uh, that's another it? little feature that we do every Saturday. <laughs> So song. make sure you tune in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a song that's got a good story in it. There's a lot of music about these what's days. What's that story that, about then? What's that, that story about? I don't know what they're going on about. Whereas that, classic from the Kinks called Lola. Yeah, what's it about? Um, I'd listened to it for the first time properly this morning. Yeah. And what I've worked out from it is, is a fella who goes out for a normal Saturday night out, he's yeah. in Soho. Yeah. He's having a, he's having a Coca-Cola or whatever. And he, uh, yeah. he sees he sees this woman. And he thinks, yeah, she's all right. Yeah. Won't mind a bit of that. So he wanders over, and he sort of gets to talking to. Her. He looks at, and she's got a great figure, nice face, and all that. Lovely knob. And uh, and she speaks, and he yeah. goes, "Oh God, got a bit of a bloke's Frog voice. Yeah. <laughs> got a <laughs> yeah. bit of a voice like a bloke." But he thought, "But you know, that's her only down point." Sure. Mm. So he he dances around with her, and I think he sits on his knee. I think he said. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's a fella. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, a sobering yeah. lesson. Yeah. Um, um, what do you take from that? Look, always sort of, if you, if you think you might be talking to, uh, 
I'd I'd looking for just, just look at it as a sort of Adam's apple. Right. <laughs> okay. I'll probably have a hairier ass than, than a woman. Yeah, I think you've gone too far away then, though. I think you've already- I think you're- you're already getting too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late to pull out. <laughs> no, pun intended, definitely. There was a pun intended. Oh, was it? Alright, was it? Yes. Alright, alright. Okay, well don't be disgusting then. <laughs> Right. Okay. Right. Um. The the uh, results of um. We, what, we ain't got a winner for the first time. Yes, uh, we, we have. We've done this feature for. We've got loads of winners. No, we haven't. We've done the, this feature for three weeks. This is the first time I've um I've managed to sort of. What? Well, let's go through them then. They're what have they got answers. wrong? The first one. The right, first one. The first one. The first one. Well, hang on. Let's just let's just let's do them in reverse order for a second. So what's what's the last one? The last one. The clue was. That bloke does, uh, does sport on the telly and he's got a little kid. What's that? That's Destiny's Child. Des, who does ITV Sport. Oh, that's he's got terrible, a Tiny's Child, right? No, that's, they, that's cut fine, yeah. they got okay, that. That's Destiny's that's Child. What's the, what, what's the, what's the middle one? Oh, the middle one. Right? <laughs> child. The second one was, yeah. uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids. That, that's a bit weird. Yeah. Right? That was PD, that was Puff Daddy. That is offensive. Go on. But that, it's not Puff Daddy. It's Puff Daddy. And he's not even called that anymore, he's called P. Diddy. Well. Okay. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. But they got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and if, so if I'm being tight, these lot are as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Tight means, means something in Manchester. Go on. Right. And the first, the first one that they, they're having problems with, I don't think them birds should be a, allowed in this They've area. They've got it. Boyzone. Boyzone. It's not, it's not Boyzone. It's, what's the clue again? I don't think them birds should be allowed in this area. That is perfect. A boy zone. No birds. No women. No women, yeah, birds, right? A boy zone. Sorry, Carl. If that isn't the answer, their clue is better than yours. That is brilliant. What was yours? Boy zone, it works perfectly. What's your answer then? Bangles. <laughs> what? I have no idea what that means. Like seagulls. So you, you don't want them in this area, so you're banning them. Bangles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, give it to Boyzone, because Boyzone's better. That is virtually no. loud, it's a Boyzone. I boy think zone. we should have a rollover. It Carl beat them. Carl beat them. You have to use his logic, surely. But theirs works. You can't do what am I thinking. No, that's not what I'm thinking. It perfectly, it works perfectly. I think you've got to give it to the, the ones that got the, the Boyzone. Well, how about, right, because they didn't actually get into my, my head. Th my well, heaven thinking, right? forbid. How about we just keep back the David Attenborough, and they can have, I'll chuck in the El Razor. Right? <laughs> okay. Most of you. And, uh, <laughs> Blondie album and the Madness Yeah, okay. One. Pick a winner at random. Pick Steve. a winner, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Paul Sloman, who got those answers, uh, and he also says, P.S. Carl, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Give that to Paul, and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> right, well. He's got a crazy night uh, well, tonight. If we can rush these over to him, he's got right. a cracking, yeah. uh, Saturday, yeah. Saturday night. Well, well, if I'm a moron, I might get your address wrong when I send them to you. Ooh. Oh! Coming yeah. right back at you, Paul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go on. Do you want to play your song? Is this oh, your annoyed because right, they did get band goals. A song from, uh, song for the ladies. I think we seem to have missed this a lot of weeks, but so this sure. is- uh, I've been wanting to play this for ages. It's to for forget things <laughs> that. This is a band at uh, Frente, who kind of came and went and oh, no yeah. one was particularly interested, but they did this, do this lovely acoustic version of the new order tune, Bizarre Love Triangle, oh, right. and this just shows you how incredible the melodies and the, and the words and everything are. Brilliant, I'm uh, prepared. New Order, just uh, play this kind Good night. Song bye for bye. The ladies. Is bye. this bye. the week? Do you reckon Richard Anderson will be back next week? Yeah, Richard Anderson will not miss this show. Excellent.